So without further ado, everybody, welcome to uh, our online tutorial, my online tutorial. I call this a toot for short, by the way. So if you ever see the word toot, that's a tutorial. Uh, my name is Aaron. For those who don't know me, um, I stream on Twitch uh, once a week, and I also do these free step-by-step -step tutorials on Twitch once a month. Uh, today, we'll be painting this painting that you can see right beside me here. This is a digital image, so you can see my little mouse. But here is our in real life image. Um, so I'll be teaching you how to paint this step by step. This is an original design I created maybe about a month ago on Twitch as well. Um, but I'll be painting it more so in like a two to two and a half hour period with you step by step now. So I actually have a blank canvas just like some of you might at home. And uh, you'll see me go color by color, step by step through the painting with you. I'll recreate it as close as possible to the original. I'm sure there will be some differences here and there. Um, but that's kind of the point of painting along is we're all going to have slightly different paintings, slightly different styles, different colors, and uh, we want to embrace that. So I hope you see the differences in mine and mine as well, <laughs> um, just to show that everyone's going to be a little different and we should be, uh, be happy with those little differences and our own little personal flares that we put on the paintings. Uh, so yeah, you'll see me do this step by step, but feel free to ask questions in the meantime as well. That's why I'm on Twitch right now with a chat open. Um, I do my best to keep up with everybody chatting in the chat box. So if you have anything to say or ask, feel free. Uh, and even if you're not painting along, if you want to just use the chat to chat with anyone else who's watching along, feel free. Um, I know there's quite a few people who don't necessarily, yeah, paint along with me step by step. They just like watching the process or um, chatting with the community. So again, feel free to use the chat as you like and I'll do my best to kind of keep up and keep responding, even if it's just general chat messages. Uh, oh yeah, good point, Marion. Thank you. Marion just threw in um, a command in the chat, uh, the supplies command, just so you can see all the nice supplies we'll be using today, but I'll go through them with you as well. Uh, for paint colors, I use five different paint colors, and I always stick to five just uh, for those who might not have as many colors available to them. Um, I stick to the basics. I stick to red, yellow, blue, uh, phthalo blue specifically, and then black and white. And then I do all the mixing and stuff. So any teals or pinks, you'll see me mix and I'll teach you how to mix those. Uh, in terms of paint brushes, I'm going to be using my usual three paint brushes as well. So I have a large flat brush. That's not a good view there. There you go. A large flat brush. This is just good for backgrounds and stuff. Some quick painting. Um, I have this medium round brush, so a little bit smaller, but with more of a pointed tip. And then we have this tiny little detail brush. So this is just for the small little details, maybe for some like ocean spray and things like that. We usually just leave that one till the end. Uh, but again, if you have different brushes, that's totally fine. I always suggest just having a few different shapes and sizes so you can kind of figure out which ones work best for you. Because that's the cool thing about painting is there's no real rules. I'm just kind of teaching you how I did it. And if you want to do it a different way, you totally can. Uh, I also have beside me a cup of paint water. I also have some paper towel beside me as well for just washing and wiping off paint brushes. And then just as a little disclaimer, acrylic paint is pretty good to wash out if you get it on your sweater or whatever you're wearing, uh, but sometimes it does stain. So if you don't want to worry about stains, maybe whip on something you don't mind getting paint on or throw on an apron or just some sort of covering just to make sure you're not getting paint on yourself. But if you get it on like, vinyl or your phone or something it just kind of scratches off it's all water-based paint acrylic so uh it's actually pretty easy to remove and uh i think that's it for the intro so i'll do a little cheers and then uh, we can get started with painting So for those who are curious about the first colors we'll be using, um, I'll be starting at the very top of the painting. So where the nice light purple is in my little reference uh, right here. Uh, so I'll be needing three colors for the, first, for the first step. The three colors are going to be white, red, and blue. I know some people like to add color by color as we need them. So if you wanna just add those three for now, you can, or you can add all five of the paint colors just so you're ready for all of the upcoming steps. <clears throat> but again, white, red, and blue for now. Uh, I want to catch up. Uh, Timber, oh, maybe, maybe you know me? Um, if so, feel free to DM me and we can chat a bit more if you don't want to expose who you are, if you don't want to dox yourself, if you'd rather be anonymous, that's fine. Yes, I, um, I do chat with people as I'm painting, though. I just try and prioritize the painting first. So, yeah, I'm still down to chat. <laughs> you like it, Gertie? 
Yes, we're looking for a light purple when combined. So here I go. Sorry, Deb, I was just pouring my paints there. Um, so I like to mix together the red and blue first. That way I can just make a nice purple to begin with. So I'm just taking a scoop of red and a scoop of blue, mixing those together. And it'll appear very, very dark, of course, because that's what a natural purple comes out to be when you mix your red and blue. It is quite dark. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm looking for a nice deep dark purple. And then once I have that, I'm going to add some white. And you can see how that really starts to lighten it up here. So yeah, you can mix together whatever kind of shade of purple you like. I'm going for something quite light in color because you can see I'm going to blend it down into a nice pale pink. So I'm using quite a fair amount of white. And for me, I would say I almost throw in a little extra red. I find that makes a little bit of a kind of brighter purple. I don't want to say warmer, but kind of warmer. It's just more of the purple I like. Everyone has their own favorite, you know, tones of color, versions of color. So feel free to make your favorite light purple, whatever it may look like. No worries. I go slow, so try to make sure. Oh, yeah, no worries. Check in anytime. I just know sometimes it's confusing for those following along because I kind of jump between <laughs> teaching and chatting, trying to uh, manage everything. So I'll do my best here. All right. I think that's good for me. So I'm going to start applying that nice light purple up here. And you can kind of see in the original painting, I'm just kind of going, I would say, an inch or two down. I'm not very good with measurements, so excuse me if I'm a little off with that. But essentially, I'm just kind of covering the top part of the canvas with some purple. And I guess I should mention I am using a 16 by 20 canvas, so 16... Sorry, 16 by 20, uh, portrait oriented, you can see. Um, but as always, these designs can be incorporated onto other sizes of canvases. So even if you have a square one, feel free to move things around. You might have to kind of shorten some elements and uh, change around some um, kind of dimensions of certain parts. But yeah, everything is manageable for sure. All right. And then just want to show you something too, for those who are new with acrylic, if you ever put on acrylic paint and you want to change it, you can just brush right on top of it. So for example, I had this purple and after I applied it, I was like, mm, it's a little too dark still for me. I want to lighten it up. So you can just throw some more color on there, blend it in. And you can see it creates a whole new color. So I just lightened up my purple, for example. And that was just my choice. I was just like, I don't know if I like that purple. I want it maybe a little lighter. So yeah, as long as your acrylic paint is still wet, feel free to just throw on more color. You can darken things, lighten things, change them up, whatever you got to do. That is amazing. Forgive us for, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a community effort. Uh, from what I remember, we all kind of started adding some lines and ideas and we all just uh, came up with that. That was, uh, yeah, very early on in the stream. Art man. Yeah, that was great, too. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a fundraiser. I wanted to be a part of it. Oh, Babe Ross suggested. Oh, I love Babe. OK. OK, yeah, Timber, um, feel free to maybe join our Discord or just find me on Discord. I'm not sure if you um, see me on Discord and other communities, but feel free to do that. And maybe we can talk a little bit more about that. Hey, thanks, Gray. Thank you. I was just getting ready to type, but thanks very much. <laughs> yeah, I would love to. Um, see what you're talking about there fundraiser wise date wise like i said i'm not doing a whole lot um activity wise and streaming wise but i can um i can try my best oh great if you just did now then i'll see it after stream perfect thank you thank you she's just coloring in a rectangle you talk about me yeah i've colored in a rectangle that's how easy painting is you know just showing off how easy it can be if you take it step by step all right, so let's go down here. We have a nice light pink. We actually kind of have maybe more of a medium pink and then a light pink. So we're going to make a gradient from, uh, yeah, something a little more medium tone to lighter. Uh, so let's start with that kind of medium tone pink here. So I'm taking that same large brush. I just washed it off there real quick. And I'm mixing together white with red. And as I said, I'm looking for something kind of in between. It's not a hot pink. It's not a super light pink something kind of in between so you can see me mixing there mine's pretty bright so i'm going to lighten it a little bit just add more white if you need it lighter i did excellent okay oh good tiggy your steak looked good by the way from the other week for your lunch it looked very yummy okay so i've got my pink what i like to do is i like to put this on the canvas first 
and then I'll blend it. So it's going to look quite harsh for now. It's going to be very a very harsh edge in between the purple and pink. So I'm just throwing that on. And you can see I'm going right up close to the purple. I'm not quite touching it yet because my goal, even though it didn't really happen there, I'm trying to get the pink separated from the purple. I'm getting a nice bright pink as a result, and then I can kind of blend them together to get some nice in-between colors. And bringing that down again, I would say I'm about a quarter of the way down as a whole. Our sky is going to take up a little less than half as a whole, so make sure you're not going below half with these next couple steps. All right, we got some pink. I'm just going to give a quick second if anyone's applying, and then I'll show you how to blend. Uh, Deb, my canvases are always a bit smaller because the dollar store by me doesn't sell larger ones. Oh, that's interesting. I felt I feel like 16 by 20 is pretty common, but uh, yeah, depending on the dollar store, of course, you might have some issues. Um, this will be my second canvas. I have shown it to everyone because everyone knows I have no talent and we're amazed by your creative following you. It was a seagull painting. Ooh, the one on the beach. That's so cool. Yeah, you gotta you gotta show proof. <laughs> Here's the canvas I'm starting with. I'm not buying this painting. I'm making it myself. There you go. That's so cool, Deb. All right, so I'm going to blend these in together now. We don't want this harsh edge. We want more of a nice soft edge in between the purple and pink. So what I've done on the side here is I just wash off my brush. Nothing on it. I'm just going to now swipe in between my purple and pink. And you can see what happens is my brush kind of picks up a little bit of both colors and starts to blend them. So that's what gives us that nice soft transition or that soft edge in between the pink and purple. And you can see I'm swiping my brush at first in between the two colors, but I might move it a little further up or a little further down because that allows it to kind of catch a little more paint and mix it in a little bit nicer. So just like that, you can see we've blended that out. Could be blended a little bit more. If you need it to be perfectly soft, just keep swiping back and forth. But keep in mind you have a limited time to do this because the paint does dry, right? Acrylic paint dries in maybe like, I would say 10 minutes-ish. It kind of gets sticky a little before then depending on your environment. But uh, yeah, as long as you're brushing in between within those 10 minutes, you should be good. And uh, if you're not, if the blending doesn't really work, you just might want to add a little extra paint. So you could add a little bit, um, a little bit more of the paint and then go in between. Thanks, Gray. I was just about to do that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you could probably ban as well. Bye, Hot Tub. You're clearly not here to be positive and have a good painting experience, so I think we should probably get rid of you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Gave it a chance, but that's all right. Uh, I've been telling everyone they have to follow you. Thanks, Deb. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I plan to continue to do this, so uh, yeah, I hope I can continue to provide some sort of uh, value to everybody. Yeah. Yeah, see, Kat's using a 6x8. That's actually perfect. Like, I obviously do uh, my designs on a rectangular canvas, but even if you, like, shorten it down, you're just essentially using amounts rather than measurements. You're using, like, a quarter of the canvas or half of the canvas. So, yeah, that works just as well. Thanks again, Gray. I appreciate it. <laughs> my hands are a little full. I had a feeling with those previous comments, but I always give it a try. We see. We wait. That was a good bonk, though. All right, so we got the purple, we got our medium pink. Let's move down to more of a very pale light pink, and we're going to bring that down to just above halfway. We want to leave a little more than halfway, as you can see in my reference, for the nice big wave and the beach. So we're going to keep the sky um, a little above half. We could even call it a third if that makes it easier. Um, so let's make our nice light pink. So I'm adding more white to my existing pink. You can either add it to the existing pink or just make a new pile. Either one works, but I won't be dipping back into the old pink personally. So I'm just using the same pile and mixing her in. Thanks, Charlene. Yeah, I'm glad everyone's still enjoying it. Light pink. And we're doing pretty much the same thing. We're just throwing that light pink below the darker pink. I'm not worried about blending yet. And that's not a hard rule, by the way. If you're someone who likes blending as you add, feel free to do that. Some people like to just kind of do the blending first and then continue to add. Um, the reason I like adding the paint first, I think I've described before, is just because I can have a nice kind of clean coat of that paint 
I don't need to worry about kind of my brush mixing into the previous color and carrying it down. I can instead concentrate on just throwing on this nice new color. And then my brush will start to pick up the older color when I start to blend. Just a little more controlled, I guess, is what I think. So it's a very pale pink, but I'm keeping in mind it's going to mix in with that darker pink and it's probably going to bring the darker pink down a little bit. Um, you do just by positively willing to share your love for us, truly believe that these types of things are what is getting us through these times. Thanks, Deb. It's getting me through it too. Um, I know I've mentioned before it. <laughs> I don't mean to take all these compliments and be like, oh yes, yes, but just know that it helps me too. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm very glad it helps others, but it's, uh, it helps everybody, including me. So I'm just glad that I found something that kind of does that for everybody, Deb. So thank you. Gray, I know it was nothing too extreme, <laughs> but I got you. Thank you. <laughs> if only other Twitch streamers were brave enough to ban toxic comments, hot take. <laughs> it's, it's really tough, Gertie, because you want to have like a, a very accept accepting, welcoming community. Um, you don't want to be too harsh. Maybe someone's coming in with what they believe is a joke, but as you saw, I give a couple chances and if it's just plainly obvious, I'm like, I don't have time for it anymore. I used to be a lot more, like you're describing, a lot more lenient, Gertie. And I'd be like, it's okay, just, you know, I'm sure they're, they don't mean the worst, but some people do, unfortunately. So that's what I've learned recently. <laughs> just need to say no. Just need to trust my gut as well. Anywho, um, to the painting here, we're just going to once again blend. So I'm just taking that brush. It wasn't perfectly cleaned. I just had a little extra of that paint left over, but it's clean enough that I can now brush in between and blend those two areas together. Soften it up. And again, like I was saying before, you can always add more paint. So I feel like this is looking a little too light. I might want to add a little more pink here. So I can just pick up a little more pink and kind of blend it right in. Again, that's the great thing about wet acrylic paint. It just kind of blends right on top and it still looks pretty natural. It's not like you added this new element. It just kind of blends right in. So you can see I'm just slowly adding a little more pink just to make it a little brighter. And that's just because I'm trying to match it to my original as best as possible. But if you want yours a little lighter, you can of course do that. I'm a blender, love me some blending. Me too. I've said it so many times, but I could just make a whole painting of just blended colors, honestly. Sometimes I'm in the middle of designing one of these paintings or a commission or whatever else I'm working on. And uh, I just want to stop when I'm done the background. I'm just like, we don't need anything more. <laughs> we can just have a nice canvas of blended paints and, and be happy with it, you know? So if anyone ever feels that, if maybe you've gone halfway through a painting and it's not that you're giving up, you're just kind of like, hey, I kind of like this. Maybe I want to keep this and try something else another time. You can always do that. There's no shame in that. Being proud of what you've made and, again, making it more into your own by making some new choices. Cool. <clears throat> just giving a quick minute in case anyone needs to catch up there with those few colors. And I'm going to take a quick couple seconds to blow my nose because that's what I do. There we go. I'm back. Uh, nothing wrong with pretty abstract blending. I agree. I agree. Just some nice colors thrown together however you want. It can be a nice consistent blend or just kind of blending with different shapes. It does not matter. Uh, Timber, to talk in the DMs, um, I will uh, respond to you probably tomorrow. While I'm streaming, I try not to peek at Discord or anything, so I would expect by tomorrow if you're hoping for a response there. Yeah. I won't be streaming tomorrow, so I'll be doing more uh, just computer work. Okay, so we're going to move down now, now that I've given you a quick minute there. Uh, we're going to move down into the water that's just behind the wave. So we're not at the wave quite yet. We're doing this nice kind of background water, um, nice and dark and deep, not very wavy, just a little bit wiggly here and there. Uh, and you can see, yeah, we'll be using kind of these 
nice deep dark kind of navy colors. We'll get a little lighter with some streaks there, but again, keep in mind this is a very background element. We'll be spending way more time on the wave itself. Um, so yeah, we'll go through a little quicker for this little part of the water here, and then we'll get to our wave. So let's start with uh, a nice dark color. We'll start off just by kind of creating our horizon line, putting a little bit of the dark color on the sides and then blending in some lighter blues. I'm going to use my large flat brush for all of that. And I'll be using blue mixed with just a little bit of black, just a little bit, because we want it kind of, uh, like I said, kind of like a navy color. At least my blue, it comes out very bright if you don't uh, mix it with anything. So I need to mix mine with a little bit of blue to make sure it's, again, a little more of that navy color. Maybe your blue is already very dark. You could just use it straight out of the tube in that case. Here, I'll show you here. Just mixing those two. So yeah, just a little bit of black is needed. The black is, at least my black paint is very pigmented. So I only use a little bit and you can see how that's turning into a nice deep kind of navy blue compared to my brighter phthalo blue right above it. Uh, anytime. Yeah, anytime, Timber. If you need to DM me now, that's fine. Like, it won't interrupt me at all. So whatever you feel. All is good. Yeah, as long as you know, I, I will reply when I'm ready. You know, you can DM me at any time. That's fine. So I'm starting, as you can see, just by applying that color in a nice horizontal line. I would say, again, I'm like probably around a third of the way down. Keep in mind as well, you can overlap. If anything, I would recommend using this paint to kind of overlap onto your light pink because that way you're ensuring that there's no gaps. You're kind of guaranteeing that you're leaving no gaps in between your sky and your water. I'm sure it is, Timber. I've uh, participated in some fun readers before and they're always a lot of fun. So if there's anything small I can do to help, I will for sure consider it. Ryan, hey, welcome in. Welcome in. We've just started our, I guess our sky, not quite our wave yet, but we've started our wave painting, so good timing. All right, and once you have that nice line on, I just, again, like to do the line first, personally. Once I have that on, though, I'm just going to apply more of that color a little below. I would say I'm approaching halfway, not quite halfway. I'm like just hovering above halfway. I just want to make sure we're leaving lots of room for our big star of the show, that nice big wave. So I'm trying to make sure we're not going too far down here. But yeah, as you can see, I'm swiping all the way across here, covering with this nice dark navy blue. And we'll be lightening the middle when we blend in some colors. So for now, we're just kind of swiping all the way across. We'll get some lighter blues in there after. In terms of this bottom part of this section, you do not need to make a perfectly straight line. You can see in the original, this is where the wave the wave will be resting on top of. So even if you need to do some little, little wigglies just to kind of showcase that so you know what's coming, feel free. But otherwise, we'll just kind of paint on top of what we have. So no need to plan ahead. No need to be extra careful here. Just throw it on. And uh, we can fix that up when the wave happens, when the wave is uh, painted. Yeah, happy little sky. We'll be doing some happy little, a happy little wave, multiple happy little waves. Oh yes, the edges. Thank you, Gray. <laughs> no swiping. Swiper. Yes, Gray brings up a great point that I haven't mentioned yet. Um, if you are using a canvas like me, it's kind of wrapped on a nice frame. Uh, paint your edges. I'm bad. I haven't been doing that. Um, so sorry for not reminding everybody at the start. That would have been a little more helpful, but um, not mandatory, I guess, just more of a little tip if you want to really have a nice completed painting from all angles once you hang it up on your wall. Um, just kind of carry your colors around the edges there. So I'm carrying that blue around. Um, if you want to do this, you could go back up. Again, sorry for not mentioning earlier, um, but to do the nice purples, the pinks, and kind of rotate those around. But in the meantime, if you want to start now with uh, the colors we're adding, feel free to kind of rotate them around just to uh, wrap the whole design around there. <clears throat> oh my god, the Peepo Juice. He still holds a lovely place in my heart, Gertie, Peepo. 
I can't say I have new favorites, but there's just so many peepos in the world. I've found so many beautiful ones recently. <laughs> I'm collecting them all. Oh, what is that? Is that your brush whack, uh, Lady Galaga? It is. Oh my god, it's too good. Lady Galaga's got a brush whack emote. <laughs> Whacking the brush like uh, like Bob does. I did that once. I don't know. I, I think you were maybe here, Lady Galaga, because I know you followed along with my Bob Ross ones before. But at one point I tried to do that. Slap, slap, slap. And I just like splattered on my <laughs> on my console, <laughs> on my PC. And I was like, I will not do that again. <laughs> I didn't think it through. I was just living in the moment and I was like, I gotta do it. <laughs> I was like, oh, that was a mistake. <laughs> I know so many peepos, but I can't, I can't replace peepo juice. He's too good. He's too good. All right, so you can see the differences here between our original and the one I'm painting. We have a little bit of light um, in the middle of the original here. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm just going to lighten the color I was just using and kind of swipe it swiper no swiping, um, on top of the color I was just using. So once again, it'll kind of blend in and you'll get these nice kind of streaks happening where we get a little bit of a highlight closer to the middle and a little bit of darkness kind of along the edges. So I'm taking that same brush whenever you've had uh, time to add a nice coat of that nice kind of uh, navy blue, lost my words there. Once you're done that, you can just add some white to your navy blue and then we can swipe that in there. So again, I'm just taking little piles of white, adding it into my navy blue. So again, if you need to, you can remix a little blue and black and then add some white to it. And I still mix the black in there. It kind of changes um, the tone of the color a little bit rather than just using blue and white. So I do recommend still using a little black if you're mixing a new pile there. You can see it looks a little just kind of muted compared to what white and phthalo blue would look like. You can take that on your brush and I like to use the thin edge as you can see I'm kind of using it horizontally here and I just kind of swipe back and forth a little bit that was very subtle so I'm gonna make this lighter with more white you can kind of test it out as you can see and then change your color if you need I'm adding a little more white it's a lot brighter swipe 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 there we go and just swiping it on top. So like I said, it will blend a little bit, but it'll kind of stay behind as well. So I'm just brushing left and right with my thin little edge of my brush, kind of keeping a little more to the middle. And that way it looks like a little more of a highlight with some darker edges here. So do that as much or as little as you like. I will warn you, the more you brush on top, the more these um, streaks kind of blend in. So if you want more of a subtle highlight, you can keep stroking on top. But if you like more of a streaky look like you see here, um, you can see how I'm doing it here. I'm just kind of swiping a couple times, you know, swiping to apply and then to blend just a little bit and then trying to leave it alone. I know it's hard, but you got to try. <laughs> and again, you can re-add color if you need to. You can re-add that darker navy blue if you need to darken up edges or kind of separate some streaks so feel free to have fun with this part and just kind of blend away here a true people collector i did that with the pinks and the paint started running down fixed it i had a good no coming out that happens that happens as long as you keep calm hobbits thanks for the follow welcome in yeah as long as you keep calm you know what to do grab a just just a little paper towel dab a little bit swipe a little bit if you need everything's fixable and of course, with acrylics, we can go on top of things. So if drips happen or whatever, just know that we will cover those up anyway. Mm hmm. Yeah, no. <laughs> hey, Todd, welcome in. Happy Sunday Eve. Hope your weekend's been good. We're just painting a wave while we listen to waves. So hope it's relaxing for you. Mm hmm. Yeah, what would Bob Ross do? He would say, that's OK. Bob would probably just leave it. Bob would be like, <laughs> this is part of the painting now. And then he'd turn it into something magical. So there's always that option too. Bob would like accept that the brush did that and be like, well, the brush decides. He's very good at that. Just kind of not even fixing things, just kind of letting them happen and then making something out of them. I wouldn't even define it as fixing. So there is always that option too. He always talks about like, sometimes the brush just goes its own way and you have to let it go. <laughs> it's kind of true. Or the paint does its own thing. Again, to a point, that's kind of true. We all have expectations in our brain, but sometimes it's nice just to let those go a little bit. 
So again, I'm just re-adding some dark color. Again, that wasn't mandatory. That was just kind of if you wanted to keep blending and playing, I'm just kind of distracting myself by, by playing a bit more before we move on to the wave. <laughs> And make some sounds if that helps you too. I swear sometimes sounds uh, help me paint better, so feel free to do that. I'll give one more quick minute just because that was all of our background there and then we'll move on to our wave. I'm going to talk a little bit about the wave before we paint it and then we can get to painting. <clears throat> I'm all about making random noises while at work, yeah? So it, uh, it applies to uh, more than just painting, huh? Unless painting is work for you. <clears throat> I'm a fan of talking to myself through things. <laughs> Aaron, I donated two paintings to a silent auction here in my community for Big Brothers. That's great, Charlene. I did that um, last year for United Way. Um, they used them for like a, uh, like a silent charity auction. So that's a great idea, Charlene. I'm glad you did that. Did they go to um, some like little brothers and little sisters or were they using it for a charity? Oh, excuse me. You said silent auction. There you go. <laughs> Answered my question. Yeah, lo lots of um, lots of good charities and businesses are always looking for things to use for silent auctions. So if anyone ever has paintings that they want to let go of just for free, just to um, do something nice for the community, I highly recommend looking into any programs like that. Again, I've done United Way, Charlene's done Big Brothers, Big Sisters. I used to go to retirement homes and just give out some paintings and everyone very much appreciated them. So it's a nice loving feeling. Yeah, take those hydration breaks while you can. I like making noises, but then I get wet noises uh, inspecting what I'm doing. I see <laughs> little sniff, sniff, sniffs, huh? <laughs> and little lick, lick, licks. <laughs> I would think. <laughs> it's probably not a human, but maybe. <laughs> Little noses. Mm hmm. Oh, noses. I thought noises as in doggy noises anyway. I got you. I got you. Wet noses. I thought you meant wet noises like slobber coming out of the dog's mouth. Both apply. Both apply. <laughs> Zach, welcome in. Hey, we're just, uh, as you can see, doing our little tutorial painting. We've got our background pretty much done. We just have to do our nice big wave. Lots of time to just work on our wave layer by layer here. So welcome in. Hope you enjoy. What's a silent auction? Usually um, what they do, Gertie, is they'll set up items on tables. So for example, with paintings, they'll display a painting. Um, sometimes there's a starting price. Sometimes the starting price is just zero. And essentially the silent auction entails that people bid silently. So you don't really know what other people are bidding. Um, so you submit a bid, maybe you say, oh, $50 for this painting, and then other people will submit bids and the highest bid wins. Um, sometimes they also have a sheet so you can see previous bids and you keep going back to write down your bid to beat the next person. Uh, yeah, it's just a little more of like a longer term auction, I guess. Usually auctions that aren't silent are very fast, you know, but the silent auction allows for people to kind of walk around and consider what they're getting. Yeah. So it's just a way for charities or organizations to make some money. So I donate a painting, for example, or Charlene said she donated a painting and uh, that's their free item. And then they make money from selling it in a silent auction. So, yeah, <laughs> they do that, too. No worries. I think I misread it. So you're good. You're good. <clears throat> yeah, you're right down your bid. There you go. I know there's different formats, but essentially there's none of this paddle waving stuff you're like 200 300 there's no guy being all like and i hear a bid for blah, 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 blah. there's no there's no that guy <laughs> george the rescue what's that is that um like uh, curious george lab is my sixth dog oh my gosh third rescue first major drooler slobber first one really i'm shocked once again i don't know many dogs that don't drool or slobber is it okay if the water gets full of the colors or should I dump and get fresh? Oh, for the paint water? Um, you should be okay because our wave is going to be mostly blue. At least my water is pretty blue. Um, if you feel like it, I would maybe take a quick moment to uh, to wash out your water if you, if you like using clean water. But I wouldn't say it's a big deal, Deb. I wouldn't say it's a big deal. I use the same water the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, especially if it's blue, I think you'll be totally fine. You might want to refresh it when we do our highlights later on, like these nice white bits on the mist, but that kind of comes a lot later. So you're probably good for now. No worries. No worries. <clears throat> I want to print in a silent auction at a Comic-Con. They gave it to a friend. Oh, that's nice, Ryan. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's fun, Gertie. Usually, yeah, usually it's for charity and stuff like that, so it gives more people, as I said, time to think and time to, uh, to bid. Yeah, they're good fun. And again, a good way to raise money. Um, I dropped a brush, so let me just retrieve that brush and then we're gonna keep painting here. Hold on. There it is. It ran away from me. The brushes don't want to paint, apparently. All right. So let me chat with you about the wave first, because it is kind of the main element here, and I'm sure some might be a little intimidated by it. So let me just chat with you about it. We can understand what we're going to do, and then we'll do it just step by step. So we have this nice wave. What I did for this wave is I started at the lighter areas and then worked my way around into the darker areas. So for our wave here, the lightest area, I would say, is closer to the center here. And I'm ignoring this part, by the way. I'm just kind of speaking about this general first wave here. I'll call this the first wave, and then we have the second kind of splashing wave down here. But for the first wave, the lightest area you can see is right in the middle. And that's because that's where the wave isn't quite um, cresting or, or crashing, I guess. The wave hasn't crashed yet. Um, so the light is shining through that wave because there's only like one very thin layer of water right here where the wave is like reaching up, right? So that's going to be our lightest area. And the key is we want to keep that the lightest area and then just add some darker teals and darker blues as we get further down and as the wave has kind of crashed down. So you can see on the sides, for example, we still have lighter blues, but not quite as light as this middle part here. And that's because the wave is crashing and we're getting kind of like thicker layers of water or even two layers of water as it's crashing. Uh, and then here, of course, all the water is, you know, not up in the sky or not rising up and it's not showing any light through it. Um, so it's going to be nice and dark down here. So I'll go nice and slow between each kind of blue and teal. Um, again, I'm sure all of your waves will look a little different. I'm sure there will be some areas that get a little lighter or a little darker, and that's okay. Um, as long as you're following that general rule that the light spot is going to be right in the middle here, and then it gets kind of darker as it gets further away and down from that spot, then uh, you'll be good to go. So we're only focusing on the blues. Um, and the other thing I'll say too is before we add all this mist, which will happen later, you might find your wave a little bit confusing. It might kind of look like one big blob of, of teal or one big blob of blue. Um, and just push through it. I know it's kind of tough. You'll kind of maybe second guess yourself a little bit and be like, it's not quite looking right. But once again, as usual, um, I find this comes together when we add this kind of splash or mist because you can see it helps shape the wave. We can kind of see now that this is the top of a wave. This is a wave that's crashing and that's all because of that foam or that mist. So we got to kind of trust the process for a bit here. Um, and then once we go back with our whites, you'll be able to really see again, the mist and the shape of the wave itself as a result. So yeah, we'll only focus on blues for now and then we can get to all that fancy mist and uh, splash later on. All right, so with that being said, we're gonna go, like I said, right in the middle here, and then I'll work our way out. Uh, so for this part, I am switching to my medium round brush, just because these are slightly smaller areas. I wanna have a little more control. I don't wanna have a big flat edge on my brush either, so using my medium round. And the first color I'm going for is this really light color in here. I'm gonna call it like a light teal, because you can see there's a little bit of kind of a green tinge in there. So. Let's make that together. We're going to mix together white, blue, and a tiny bit of yellow. I'm just reloading my white and then I'll show you as I mix it. Hopefully this doesn't explode. Ooh, nervous. I'm gonna pick at it, hold on. Eh. But again, you can start by mixing white and blue and then a little bit of yellow in there. If anyone works out of tubes or jugs, you know what I mean. It's uh, <laughs> like the acrylic paint kind of dries up a little bit. And then when you go to pour it, there's a big plug and it can be a little scary to squeeze it out. Okay, I need a little more blue. All right, let me show you as I mix in case anybody's waiting for that here. So lots of white. Oh, I forgot the yellow there. Lots of white, little bit of blue, because again, we do want a light color here. So we're using mostly white. And I forgot to pour my yellow, so give me a quick second. 
but the yellow we're just going to add a tiny bit of because if we add a lot it's going to turn it straight green and we want more of a just teal so I'm just grabbing a little bit of yellow mixing it into my light blue and you can see already how it's kind of turning a little more teal not quite green but more of a turquoise teal color and again very light very light I'll zoom out of the original just so you can see again. I just wanted to give you a nice close up of those lighter teal colors. There we go. I see some chats. I'll be getting to that in a second. I think a lot of you are just chatting amongst yourselves for now. So I'm kind of starting with this very loose oval shape. I'm kind of going just below the dark blue and I'm going anywhere right in the middle. It's just a nice blob, nothing fancy. Just right in the smack middle, a little more, like I said, lengthwise versus heightwise, so a little more of an oval shape, but you can see very loose, very loose. Nothing needs to be exact in here. We're just kind of throwing on paint and the main idea will be blending that paint. So I'm just making sure there's a fair amount of paint on here. I'm not quite like blobbing it on, but I am using a lot of paint and just using some light pressure to apply it just so it's thick and that way it'll stay wet a little bit longer giving us a longer chance to blend so starting with that and i might even lighten it up just a little bit more so once again if you need to change your color while it's on the canvas just throw in some extra color and mix it around a bit i just want to make sure this is very nice and light so i just mixed in a little extra white Sometimes the paint looks different, right? When it's amongst all the colors on your palette versus on your nice blank canvas. So no harm in changing it up if you feel like it. If you have the urge to, then go for it. Okay, leaving that there for a second as I catch up on chat and blow my nose, excuse me. For those new to the channel, I just have a perpetually runny nose. I'm not even sick, um, so that happens a lot. Oh, it's a home renovation show. I see, I see, Tiggy. I love those kinds of shows, personally. I find them very relaxing. One of the print, me and the later staying by the paper, writing bids back and forth. I see. Yeah, Ryan, that's the one thing about silent auctions. It can get kind of awkward when you find someone else who you know wants the thing you're bidding on. You're just watching each other. <laughs> it's like, don't you dare. <laughs> you go in and quickly write more. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you, Vonda. Thank you. <laughs> Tiki, we all need some alone time here and there, you know? I do too, and always at inappropriate times. I always have a small pack of travel tissues in my purse. Yeah, you you know the life. <laughs> you want to have Kleenex with you everywhere. If there's no Kleenex, it's a bad time. Yeah, it's just been all my life. I feel like people always assume I'm sick, and that's why I like to say, like, no, no, don't worry. <laughs> I'm not coughing, I'm not sneezing anywhere. It's just a bad nose. <laughs> Allergies. Talk to an allergy specialist. I'd be surprised what they can do for you. You know, I have a little bit, honestly, Gertie. I, this year, I've been trying to take care of some health issues that I've been having, and that's been one of them. I'm like, all my life, my nose has been funny. I want to figure it out. And I've tried two different things now that haven't helped, but I honestly haven't had an official allergy test yet. Um, I was just kind of given things that were um, kind of like baseline allergy medications. I had a pill and I had a nasal spray. I hate the nasal spray. Oh my god. Um, but the pill also did nothing for me. So I'm a little skeptical, but I might try and continue the allergy route because I think I just don't want to accept that I have allergies because I love going through life saying I'm not allergic to anything, but I think it probably is. <laughs> it maybe is. But I hear so many other things about like nose structure and things like that. And I'm like, maybe my nose is just structured weird. But anyway, it's an ongoing thing. All right, let's keep painting here as I chat. So what I'm doing now is I'm just slowly adding a little more blue and maybe a little more yellow just to keep it a little more teal. And I'm just making darker versions of the color I was just using there. So still not very dark, just darker. You can see I'm just adding a small amount of blue, small amount of yellow, making a nice turquoise. And I'm kind of, I'm watching my um, original painting there. I'm just kind of looking around the light spot and trying to get colors that are similar. Again, we don't need to get exact colors, of course. That would be very, very hard. So just similar. So just looking and seeing, okay, it's just a darker teal. So I'm mixing more blue and yellow. And once you have that new color, you can start to apply that around your oval. Again, just in a very wavy form. 
So I'm going kind of below it, going to the sides a bit, kind of expanding out to the edges a little more. And same method as what we were doing in the sky. I like to apply the color first and then I'll kind of blend it. So it's going to look very harsh to begin with. It's going to look kind of blobby, very edgy. But once I'm happy with the amount of color I've added, I'm just going to now take the brush. You can either wash it off or just use it as is if there's not a lot of paint left over. You can see there's not a lot. I just wiped it off. And then I start to brush in between. So it kind of, again, softens those two edges, brings them together, brings the two colors together rather, and starts to make more of a natural looking light spot in your water. So be careful, you can see as I get further to the middle, I'm kind of bringing the darker color in a bit more. So every now and then, if you feel like your brush is getting a little too loaded up with your darker color, just wash it off or wipe it off. That way you're removing the dark color from your brush and you can start fresh again. Or you can add a little more of the light color to help make sure it's nice and bright in the center. So again, just add some paint here and there if you need or just keep kind of wiping your brush off to make sure it's kind of clean. That way you're not re-adding more color than you want. So you can see very subtle difference, but that's the point we're gonna slowly start to work our way around. And at this point, if you wanna use this new teal to kind of start to shape your wave a little bit, you can do that. And it can be very rough because again, the top edge of the wave is going to be covered with all of these nice splashes and the nice foam, the nice mist. So don't worry too much about how the top itself is looking. It's more so just getting a nice jagged shape. So you can see I'm just taking my brush kind of going up and down a bit. What I'm creating is you can see this area here. So just kind of an up and down wavy look for where the wave is kind of curling over and eventually will crash. It's almost like I'm planning it out for later. Again, this isn't super necessary of a step. It's more so necessary that we're making sure we're not leaving gaps. So at the very least, just make sure you're bringing this new color up to the dark blue, or you can even overlap like I'm doing and start to quite literally shape out the wave that you want to see here. Okay. I'm going to catch up on chat here and then we'll keep painting. <clears throat> Guessing allergic to a lot, but lightly, so don't need meds. Always had sniffles. Yeah, it sounds like we're on the same page for sure. Oh, Tiggy, no, save them, save them. I can relate, I used to love not being allergic to anything. Food, pollen, season changes, then I started getting hives. Ooh, see, I don't have that. Uh, I'm thinking they were bug bites. I did the skin test and found I was allergic to almost all of them. Oh no, this is my fear, Gertie. I don't want to have to think about it. <laughs> it's so silly because it would probably solve problems, but I have this weird thing where I'm like, I just don't want to be allergic to anything. Yeah, I probably am though. I just need to organize it. I just haven't uh, made the phone calls to do one of the yeah, skin tests that you're talking about. So yeah, it sounds like that could be it though. All right, so I'm going back to my plate and same thing, just making a slightly darker color. I've now gone around my nice light spot. I've blended that out nicely. So now I'm making a darker color. And as I go, by the way, I find that I lean more and more towards just a blue rather than a turquoise. So you can see how as I'm mixing here, I am adding blue and I'm still adding a little bit of yellow. But just to make it a nice dark blue by the time we get kind of to the edges here, I like to add less and less yellow. So that way it gets a little bit darker, even more darker, I guess, as I add my blue. I feel like blue versus teal. The blue kind of naturally looks a little bit darker, a little bit deeper. So that was my strategy here. And as I was looking at a photo of a wave, I kind of felt as well that the light spots were a little more turquoise and the dark spots were a little more just blue, if that makes sense. So less of that kind of green tinge. So that's what I'm trying to do here as I mix. I'm still making a darker teal, but just less yellow in there. So it's more, more of just a plain blue. So same thing, I'm just going to start adding that. Um, on the left hand side in particular, I'm starting to add this blue, I'm going to point with my mouse here, where the wave um, is crashing. So this wave here is crashing over versus this wave here is still nice and open. So just to kind of show the crash and just to show where I am going to make that nice crashing wave, I'm trying to shape that out a little bit here. So I'm starting at the top here kind of off center of my turquoise blob and I'm kind of diagonally coming down 
So it's kind of creating that lip almost, if you can visualize that lip of the crashing wave versus this nice open wave. Again, it'll look kind of jumbled for now, but once we add that nice foam and mist, it'll make a lot more sense. So you can leave this edge harsh because of that, because it's kind of like the wave almost overlapping in a way. So you don't need to blend that necessarily. I'm just going to continue this color a little further over. And once again, I'm also trying to shape up the top a little bit, just doing some nice little curves and waves. Which again, we can always edit and alter when we have our mist going. Okay, so hopefully everyone understands that. The visualization of the crash, the wave is kind of crashing that way. And you can add the same color on this side. We're not adding any fancy crashes or differences here. We're just, again, kind of blending this new color. So we're trying to darken up the edge a little bit, blend into the teal, and expand the blue to the right. So same thing, just applying that color and then swiping a little into the teal. If the teal's a little dry, just grab a little extra of the previous color or mix together a similar previous color and blend in between. You can see slowly we're getting darker. <clears throat> I always fall into a trap of not mixing enough paint, by the way, so I'll say out loud for everybody, try and mix more paint than you think, <laughs> because there's nothing more frustrating, in my opinion, than trying to complete just a little extra of your painting and then you run out of the color you're using and then all of a sudden you have to try and color match and you're spending a couple minutes mixing and it never quite looks the same. So, you know, I know we all want to obviously not waste paint and try and save it, but sometimes it is best to just say, okay, I'm just gonna make a little extra. <laughs> if I have extra paint left over, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. And it will save me from remixing paint if I need to, so. Okay, so see how that's getting a little darker? Mm-hmm. I'm still not going down. I'm gonna leave this for darker colors down here. I'm kind of more working to the sides right now. So just leaving that there so you can see it, what we've done so far, and then I'll keep bringing us down. And the edges, of course. <laughs> I keep forgetting about the edges. <clears throat> Took it back, that's good. <laughs> yeah, what was the design, uh, Tiki? Gertie's asking what kind of painting it was. Do you know what diamond paintings are, Gertie? I assume so. If not, that's kind of the first explanation. Yes, you should bring it to the edges. Oh, that's why you did it great, thank you. I was like, <laughs> I'm just forgetting. Yes, uh, if you like the whole um, idea of the painting continuing to the edge, bring it around. Um, if you're asking about this spot in particular, I am leaving it just so I can do a little bit of a darker blue. If you'd like to bring it to the edge for now, you can, and then overlap with a darker blue. But whenever you see me leaving gaps, it's more so just because I'm going to add color there anyway, so it's in the interest of like not wasting paint, you know? But you can always cover up as much as you want and then overlap if you need to. So I brought it to the right-hand edge, but I've left this left-hand edge a little more open because I see some darker blues kind of hiding in there. Oh, you don't. Oh, diamond paintings are, um, so there's no paint involved. Um, you're just using like little plastic. They look like diamonds. <laughs> They're just little jewels. And your canvas is a big plastic um, board, I guess acrylic board. And they have all these little like holes or little segments in them. And all you need to do is place the little gemstones into the little holes or the little compartments. And then as a whole, it makes a big kind of shiny glittery painting. Again, no paint involved, but you're just sticking these little gemstones in their little spots. So yeah, it's like a nice... Um, it's kind of like a paint by numbers, except you're using gemstones instead of paint. Uh, it shows you exactly which colors go where, and yeah, it's just a nice soothing, relaxing thing to do. Yeah, there you go. With rhinestones, that's a better word. I was calling them gems. Yeah. They're beautiful. I'd love to try, but I worry I'll drop the gems and miss some, and then the dogs will eat them. That's fair. I do think most diamond paintings come with extras, but I can understand the fear that doesn't <laughs> remove the fear of the dogs eating them, so... I can understand. All right, I'm just gonna keep swiftly moving along here with the colors. 
I'm only adding more white because my paint is drying up here. <laughs> so once again, I'm just making a new darker kind of teal blue color. So I am starting with white again, but you can see I'm mixing much more blue in here. And I'm going to mix my yellow again. And I'll let you know I'm working on this middle area kind of below the uh, the glow. So I am going to keep this a little more teal again, and then I'll go back to more of the blue, the dark blue for the outsides. So this is now a darker teal. But I'm keeping it a little more teal to match with this light spot. You'll see more of like the green teal down here and then more of just the darker blues on the sides. So again, blue, white and yellow. Just more of the blue and a little more of the yellow this time. And again, test it out, see how it's looking so you can see a nice significant difference. I'm going to start swiping that on kind of in the middle and blending a little out to the edges. You kind of just blend wherever it starts to touch, right? So if it does kind of make its way to the side here, just lightly blend into that blue. And I'll say again, we don't need to worry about blending on this edge because this, this wave is kind of overlapping. So if you want to bring a color just right up to the edge, and not blend on this particular edge, that's fine. It's kind of our one little um, chill area there where we don't need to worry about blending. But otherwise I am blending up into the light spot, so lightly swiping back and forth. Again, I can dip into a lighter teal if I need to help blend. But yeah, just using a very light touch helps with blending as well. You can almost like fake blend by doing that just by using a very soft touch and allowing the paint to just kind of scrape off and kind of graze over top. Like that. I think I'll bring this a little further down. Just checking how far we are down. A little more room. Okay, so I'll leave that there for a second. Coming up next, I'll make an even darker teal just to kind of finish off this middle area. And then we're going to finish off the sides that I have remaining with more of a deeper blue. Yeah, it's so shiny. It's so glittery. Hey, Lori, welcome in. Welcome in. We're, uh, as you can see, in the middle of our toot. Uh, we're just starting this wave painting. I got some nice relaxing wave sounds in the background, so I hope that's nice and soothing. I hope you're doing well, Lori, with everything you've uh, had to grapple with recently. Hopefully you can uh, relax and enjoy some painting tonight. Sounds really pretty. Where do you get diamond paintings? Michaels. Maybe Tiggy can answer. I've actually never done a diamond painting before. I think Amazon has them if you are a shopper of Amazon. Uh, Tiggy says online. There you go. I think Tiggy is across the pond, um, Europe area. So we might have different options on our side of the pond. But yeah, there you go. Yeah, Philippine Amazon. There you go. Um, so yeah, Amazon online. I would expect Michaels would have it though. I think any kind of established craft or art store would have them. That would be my guess. But yeah, I've never done that, so. All right, let me finish off with one more teal here and then I'm going to move us to the sides. And then we've pretty much got at least the background of the wave done for the top half here. So let's go a little deeper with another deep teal. We've got more blue being mixed in. And again, just to keep it teal, I'm grabbing a little more yellow. I'm making it nice and deep. I wouldn't say it's our darkest color we're making, but we're making it pretty deep now. This is a pretty deep teal, pretty deep turquoise. And again, that's just by adding more blue and a little more yellow. And again, you can test it out. Ooh, that's a nice color. Love that. And as I described, this is kind of more in the middle left and right wise and just blends up into the teals above. So we're getting a really nice smooth transition. The more colors you use, the more tr more of a nice smooth transition you'll get. If you ever want to like just do a quick version of this painting, you could of course reduce the number of teals and blues that you use, but you won't get that nice smooth transition between all those colors or it just might be a little more um, abrupt in between. So if you want really nice smooth transitions and a good way to practice lots of blending, just doing this, just using lots of slightly different versions of colors and then swiping them into each other is a really good way to do that. <clears throat> I 
And again, if you need to, if anything isn't blending correctly, just go back to your previous lighter color and use that on any harsh edges. I try not to do that because you can see it means that I end up going further up the painting and further up the painting and then adding more. <laughs> it's kind of like a little, you kind of uh, need to go all the way up the process if you start to re-blend unless you're very careful. But yeah, there's no harm in that. It just might take a little longer. So you can see I've gone up to that light spot color and I've used that to blend. But yeah, it's all worth it to do all those little things. <clears throat> Paint goes nicely with the one on the wall. Yes, thank you. I assume you're talking about this one. Yeah, I feel like that one honestly in particular really kicked off this whole um, urge to paint water, Lori. So I'm really glad that that's happening honestly because I've been really enjoying it. Like the wave sounds, it's good. I know I usually have music on in the background, but I just thought it was too fitting for this painting. So wave sounds it is. No worries, no worries, Lori. You do you. Take your time. I just hope you're enjoying. Mm-hmm. Good. I'm glad everyone's relaxed. I'm sure it'd be more relaxing if I wasn't talking, but it's what I gotta do for the tutorial, so. <laughs> yeah. Try all the things. Yeah, yeah. Again, diamond painting, I, I feel like if you've ever done a paint by numbers or been intrigued by paint by numbers, that would probably go right along with it, too. Same thing. I haven't tried it, but it's because I do like my paint by numbers and just like painting in general, so. But yeah, I just love anything that's a nice, easy craft like that, where you can just kind of like it's like a puzzle almost, except you're not even trying to figure something out. It's all right in front of you. So it's very, very nice. All right. So looking at our painting, looking at, I guess, the top half, you can see we have some sections kind of missing. We have the two sides here. I left a little bit of this blank because I want to get a little darker in here. Um, so we're just going to make those nice deeper blues and continue to blend into the existing teals and blues. So um, looking, if you really want to be particular about my original, I would say there's an even darker area off to the left versus the right. So let's start on the right here. We can use this color for the right and then we can bring it on top of this wave. And then we'll make this very deep color over here as well, just to really stick to the original. But like I said, small differences here and there are fine if you need to do that. All right, so I'm gonna add more blue to my color I've been using. And now is the time where I'm not really going to add any yellow. I'm just going to make kind of deeper blues just to get some different different tones of blue in here. Rather than the turquoises, I wanna get just some, just some deeper blues. So you can see I'm darkening up here with plain blue. I did mix it into my previous color, so there's probably a tiny bit of turquoise hanging in there, but not a lot. You can see it's mostly just blue. You can especially see when you apply it here how it's very blue toned versus more of a green turquoise. So I'm gonna use this now to start blending kinda up here. I'm gonna blend to the side of this turquoise. I think I'll bring it down a little more, just a little bit. We don't want to bring it down too far. And use a little more pressure. If you feel like the paint isn't blending, sometimes just using a little extra pressure on your brush helps because it helps kind of pick up that drying paint below. So instead of re-adding paint, just try and use a little pressure here and there and that might help. Okay, you can see I'm sweeping it maybe a little underneath, but not much. And I'm going to put this up here as well, just to get a little darker, just to get a little transition in this wave up here. And again, you can use this to make your little bumpies. There we go. I'm gonna get my lighter blue, just to blend a little. And if new blues start to form as a result, that's totally fine. Again, we don't need to stick to these exact blues each time. There's sure going to be, I'm sure there's going to be in between blues and new blues that form as a result of all this nice blending. There we go. And you can kind of see again, that lip starting to form, that curve. So we just have one more spot to go for that upper part of the wave. And then we're going to move down to kind of like the splash zone down here.
Oh yeah, and you can get custom ones. Yeah, I don't know if everybody knows that, but you can get like custom diamond paintings, kind of like paint by numbers. I think there's services that do custom paint by numbers as well. But yeah, I've heard that too, that people will send in photos or images and companies will make a whole diamond painting for you based off the image. Uh, when we move into the highlights, can we have a moment break to get clean? Yeah, sure, sure. I can uh, do that. Maybe a couple minutes just before you're talking like the mist and stuff, right? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, we can do that. And then we can also do the beach after too, because that beach is going to be a little bit of a different color as well. Yes, for sure. I'll, uh, I'll make sure to tell you as well when that's happening. Okay, in the meantime though, let's get this last little corner done and then we just have down here to go for water. Um, so over here is our very, very deep blue. So actually I would use blue with a tiny bit of black again. I'm not trying to make it quite as dark as that navy blue that we had to begin with up here, but I am trying to make it a little more navy if that's making sense, just a little darker. Uh, Diane, is that right? Welcome in. Thank you for following. Just doing a step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I'm kind of chatting with chat as I do it. So yeah, feel free. Otherwise, uh, enjoy the painting. Thank you for following. All right, so I've got blue mixed with a tiny bit of black here, just to make it, like I said, a little deeper compared to everything else. And it's the same process, just swiping that on. and blending as we go. This one might be a little bit of a trickier blend just because it's such a dark color. So you'll just want to make sure you're going very softly with your touch and also re-adding some color if you think it's a little bit dry. And once again, we don't need to blend this area because this is the wave that's overlapping. So if it looks a little messy on this edge in particular, that's okay. It's more so in here we want to blend. So I'm gonna carefully grab more of that previous color and blend that out. Doing our best to just keep that blend going. The other thing too is if you feel like there's just small little spots that are maybe a little streaky or a little rough that you haven't really blended to perfection, um, again, I really wouldn't worry about it. Along with the mist, we're going to be putting in these kind of like water lines in here. And I find that helps kind of cover up those smaller bits that you might not be the biggest fan of. So just like with most, most paintings, if there's tiny bits that you just keep bugging you and you can't seem to get rid of, I would just kind of say, it's all right, we'll just leave it for now. And there'll be something else later that helps kind of, kind of cover it up or just kind of helps make it look a little more cohesive with everything. Just nice and slow, just grabbing my previous colors and lightly blending. There we go. Yeah, so you can see it might be a little streaky here and there, but that's okay. Just got it nice and dark here. There we go. So again, as I said at the start, it might look a little messy, a little like, mm, I don't know if this is going to work out. But again, this is a really good base here. Just having that really nice light highlight here, the nice darker colors blending here. And of course, this overlap of the wave here. That's really our basic elements for this wave. And probably the hardest part, everything else down here is going to be quite easy just to blend out. So nice, easy stuff coming up. And decorate your room. Ooh, what colors do you think? You have kind of a palette going on. Nice color plan. So again, I'm sure there's slight differences here and there. Of course, things aren't exactly the same, but you can see how basically we've got all of this area completed. We're just going to look down here next.
All right. So I'll talk to you about this area first, and then of course we'll paint it. Um, you can see when you really try and just focus on this one little strip down here below everything we've worked on, there's not a whole lot going on. We have a little more of a turquoise center, I would say. And then once again, as we get it to the edges, it gets a little more blue. You can see how it kind of goes from this green tone to more of the blue tone. But otherwise, there's no fancy like highlighted areas. If you really, again, just look at the part I'm highlighting now with the, my mouse, it's kind of just a rectangle of turquoise and blue. Turquoise being more in the middle here and then blue being further out to the edges. So it's just going to be two colors we're working with uh, and we'll be kind of trying to blend them above a little bit as well. You can see there might be a little bit of a harsher line um, as a result, but we can just kind of softly blend our best and uh, get that get that all incorporated in there. There we go. Okay. So once again, I'll start us with the lighter color, which was that turquoise, and then we'll do a little bit of a blue on the outside. So I would say to start, I'm going for kind of a medium turquoise. I don't want to recreate this very light turquoise that we started with because we want that to be like the, the lightest part, the nice center area of the blue at least. So let's make a turquoise just slightly darker than that. So I'm doing my white, blue, and a little bit of yellow again. But I would say this is more of a medium turquoise, which is something a little darker than our light, light stuff that we were working with earlier. Something like that, something that was kind of more in the middle here, kind of like the transition turquoise. See that? So it's not as light as this nice light spot, but still a nice kind of more vibrant turquoise. Because again, what's happening down here is it's almost like a smaller wave is forming, kind of just like a little wave that's going to crash. So it's not going to have quite the light spot that the big wave has. There's not as much light shining through, but it's still going to be a little highlighted, right? So that's why I'm making this kind of medium color here. I am using my big brush, by the way. I guess I didn't announce that. Sorry. Um, I just switched to it because we're doing more of a larger area. You might see me switch in between those brushes, though, as I go. And that's just a personal preference thing. I'll always try and recommend brushes. But, you know, as we go along paintings, as we as we paint along and as people get more experienced, I just encourage everybody to really use whatever color or other uh, whatever brushes they like colors to you. But brushes mostly. I feel like as people paint and get more experience, they um, kind of find their favorites, you know, they find what works for them. And kind of, as I said at the start, that's fine. We don't need specific rules. You don't need to stick to specific brushes or specific instruction with painting. I feel like once you gain some confidence, you can just kind of choose what you think is best and choose what works for you, right? There's no rules that say you have to do things a certain way continuously if you find better ways yourself. So again, I just switched to a smaller brush for the blending there just to keep it a little more controlled. I did re-grab some paint because mine was a little dry once again. It's hard because you obviously want to paint quickly so you can use all those colors as they're nice and wet, but of course we also want to take our time and enjoy it. So that's why you might see me re-adding here and there. Looks good. Thanks, Fonda. The more I started painting, I learned I like flat brushes. There you go. Yeah, even just something as simple as that. It's like you learn what, what uh, shape you like best and then you have a whole selection of the flat brushes. Yeah. Oh yeah, and the mop. I still haven't tried a mop. Great. I keep ch saving videos and um, logging paintings that I know use the little mop brushes, especially for clouds. I feel like they're just amazing. Mop brushes, I believe, are the very fluffy, big round ones and you just kind of lightly use them to blend and they create such soft edges. They're so beautiful. Oh, yeah, the mop brush. So yeah, just as Grace said, she's like, I know I like my my flat brushes. So she sticks with those. That's great. I kind of have those three that I keep mentioning because that's what I honestly regularly use with my own paintings as well. I don't find I stray a whole lot. I might have some in between sizes, but honestly, those three are the mostly the ones I use anyway. So that's what I have found that works for me. All right, for those watching what I'm doing here, I am just mixing my kind of side blue color here. So this is once again going to be slightly darker than the color we just made, and I would say slightly more blue. So all I did is I grabbed a little extra blue and I mixed it on top of that turquoise I was just using. So it's pretty similar, but just a little darker and a little more blue. Same thing, I'm just swiping that in from the edge. 
Just trying to blend that into the turquoise I just laid down and also blending up a little bit. And I know I mentioned before, but I'll mention again, you can blend just by slightly kind of wisping your brush back and forth. You don't necessarily need to blend the wet paint color into a wet paint color. If you're sick of re-adding the old paint colors, you can just very slightly, very lightly swipe back and forth and it almost creates like a, a little bit of a dry brush. And to me, that's like just a different form of blending almost. It's like a dry blend almost. So again, no rule to say it all needs to be perfectly wet on wet blended. You can do a little bit of this dry brushing too. It kind of adds a nice texture as well. I feel like water is usually quite smooth, so that's why I'm doing a lot of wet on wet blending. But you might have some little rougher patches, some more textured looking patches. So if you don't mind that look, you can of course just lightly swipe back and forth and you can see that creates a little bit of a texture there. <clears throat> oh, because you're using um, text to, not text to speech, um, close captioning. Is that a little better if I move that up here? I assume we don't really need to see the top anyway at this point. Hopefully that helps. Yes, we have closed captions available for those who want to use those and they might cover up the bottom. That's a good point, Charlene. Hopefully that helps you. Are those real brush names? Mop and Deer, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, Gray actually taught me about them because uh, secret, I didn't go to art school, so I don't know all the names of things and I wasn't really <laughs> tested on all of that. I never had to learn it all. So sometimes I use names that aren't right, but yes, Mop and Deerfoot are correct. <laughs> a nice mop brush. But I didn't know them before uh, before Gray told me about them, so there you go. Mm hmm. Yeah, I moved it up just in case she wants to use the captions. That's right. You can turn them off, though. That is a good point, if you don't want them. There should be a little CC that you can click. Yes, Gertie's got you. Thank you, Gertie. That's so helpful. Thank you. She's got us covered. Is this where we should exchange water? Let me give a quick think to that. I'm trying to debate if we have one more thing to do. No, we're gonna do that with the beach. Okay, yeah, I would exchange your water now, uh, Deb and anyone else, if you want a nice clean cup of water for um, both the beach and the highlights, because I'll let you know, Deb, we're also gonna do this light beach color with the new water. So if you'd rather get that done first before changing, you can. Otherwise, change it now. We'll do the beach and then we'll do the nice highlights on top. Yeah, I'll give a couple minutes for that just in case. So water change time if you'd like to change your water. No worries, Charlene. That's a good point. I never think of the closed captions. But I like having them there just in case. Oh, God, pull that back up. There we go. So, yeah, as mentioned, I'll just kind of show off what we're doing next here. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're just making a small little strip of beach just to show that the waves are crashing onto something. So I'll be making this very light beige color and then I'll be kind of tapping in. Oh, thank you. That was Vonda gifting to Deb. Oh, thank you. I'll let Deb know when she comes back. I assume she's run to grab her water, but thank you for uh, for gifting to Deb. She's a little bun now. She can use our nice emotes. Thank you very much, Vonda. Thank you. So yes, we have the light beige and then I was going to say we'll be kind of tapping. I was clicking my mouse as I was doing that as if I was tapping my brush or tapping my mouse. Uh, tapping in this kind of like darker sand color to make it look like the water is kind of splashing into the sand and the sand is kind of lifting up a little bit. So we'll do all of that next. Just want to give an extra minute just in case. I know she's given so many, especially recently. I really appreciate it. It's always very kind. I know a lot of people like to gift subs to uh, to new people in the chat who seem to be enjoying themselves, so it is very, very kind. It's never necessary, but it's always appreciated, absolutely. I'm sure Deb will like to know that. And it gives ad-free viewing, I always forget that. And I'm sorry if anyone's had ads, I'm that's out of my control. <laughs> if anyone ever needs me to repeat anything due to ads, I'm always happy to do that. I unfortunately cannot control <laughs> ads on this stream. That is Twitch's choice. Oops. Yes! Deb, I, uh, yeah, you were gifted a subscription. I was just explaining that means you get ad-free viewing. So if you've seen any ads, um, those will be off now, now that you're subscribed and you can use some fun little emotes. If you click on the little smiley face, you get some uh, bun emotes that I made for Aaron Bun Paints. Yeah. 
Uh, Diane, hey, I saw you follow earlier. Welcome to the chat. I'm um, just tuning in for the first time on Twitter. On Twitter? You mean on Twitch, I assume? <laughs> How long will the lesson be posted? Um, so what I do, um, it was Diane, right? Yeah, what I do, Diane, is it stays up on Twitch. So if you're familiar with Twitch, you can view this video anytime in the next three months, I think. Twitch has a three month window that they keep videos posted. Um, but otherwise, I post them all to my YouTube channel. So here's my YouTube channel in case you're interested. Um, what I do is I take the recording from Twitch and then I just shorten it just a little bit. I chop off the front and the back of the uh, of the stream kind of when I'm introducing things. Okay, are you familiar with YouTube? That might be a bit better just above you. Um, I, it's just a whole channel of pre-recorded videos. They're from my past live events that I just throw up to um, have people. Yeah, there you go. So click that YouTube channel. Um, you can subscribe to it if you want. It's free, of course. It just kind of subscribing notifies you when I post new videos. Um, and that way you can be notified when I post this wave video. My goal is to get it up within the week, so you'll probably see it in the next seven days on that YouTube channel. But otherwise, there's like 80 other paintings. If you want to distract yourself in the meantime, there's lots there. But yeah, Diane, what I do is I do this approximately once a month. So if you like painting uh, live with me, then you can join me on Twitch here. But if you'd rather just kind of take your own time and paint when you want, you can use the YouTube channel. Yeah. Oh, where do I see it? You just uh, click the link that I posted here. I'll post it again. Click that link that I just posted in the chat and it'll open up a new window and that'll give you my YouTube channel and you can see all the videos there. Let me know if you need more help. I think that uh, that's good though. <laughs> Deb, yeah, huh, that's a little rundown. You get ad free viewing, get emotes, and you get that cute little bun beside your name. It just shows that you're a supporter. So essentially, Vonda supported me on uh, behalf of you, I guess, kind of using your name there. So yeah, it's all good. It's a nice, just it's just a nice gift. People gift subscriptions to other people in the community just as a nice like, thanks for being here. It's a way to show me support and further support from uh, those who watch. Essentially. That's a little rundown. All right, so now that I know you're back, Deb, and I gave a couple minutes for anyone else who was grabbing fresh water, uh, we're going to move down to our beach. So I was just describing that we'll have two beach colors. We'll have the main kind of light beige color for a very light and bright beach. And then I'm going to make um, a darker beach color to kind of blend up into the blue to make it look like the water is kind of crashing into the sand and the sand is kind of lifting up with the water. So it'll kind of be a nice in between there. So let's start with the light beach color and then we'll tap in a darker color. Alrighty. So we're going to use uh, three colors again. We're gonna start with white because we want a nice, very light beach. So I'm grabbing my white first and I am using my large flat brush because we're covering up this whole bottom area here. So lots of white. And to the white, I'm going to add two colors, just a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red. So essentially we're trying to make a very light beige color. Um, there's lots of different beach and sand colors all around the world. So of course, again, if your beach is a little different than mine or you want a darker sand color, more of a dirty sand, that's okay. But I kind of, when I see nice turquoisey waters, I think of a very light sandy beach. That's so why I'm using tons of white and you can see just a little yellow and red will turn it into more of that beige color there. Apologize if any others, I take long with the paints. Oh, you're good. You're good. No, no, uh, that was the that was the first gifted sub to you. So you're all good. You'll be notified if you're gifted a subscription. You are good. When I first watched, I was gifted a subscription. Yeah, exactly. It just it's kind of like a continuous little giving train. And again, I don't want to mean that in a pressuring way at all. That's uh, it's just kind gifts for those who who like the community. And it's kind of like a way to say, hey, we want you to stick around, I guess. <laughs> it's an encouragement to say. We enjoy your company and we want to encourage you to stay. So it's an extra little gift. Okay, so I've got my, you can see very light beachy beige color. And I'm just applying that. You can see right along the bottom here, just swiping left and right. Nothing fancy, just kind of filling up any remaining space. I haven't really been checking in with all of you on distance on my canvas. I apologize, but I'm definitely below three quarters here. I've just have the small strip left over. But again, also customizable. If you want more of a beach or less of a beach, you can of course adjust as well. 
See, it is good to change out your water. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but I'm getting slight blue streaks. <laughs> I'm just kind of blending them out as I get them. My brush still has a little blue in there, even though I washed it out. So that's why it's good sometimes to, uh, to clean out your water. Sometimes the darker, more pigmented colors can stick around a little more than you want. And again, if you don't like your color, you can always mix a new one, apply it on top. I'm just making a little bit of a darker one just to blend in. Swiping that in there. That blue is continuing to come out. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, generally if you just blend them away, you just keep swiping, keep adding more of the color you want, you'll start to blend away whatever's giving you trouble there. You're getting orange, so I would probably add in lots more white at that point because orange is by, made by mixing yellow and red. But to get a beige, you want to have mostly white in there. So if anything at this point, I would actually grab a big pile of white and put it aside. And then take just a tiny bit of your orange that you have and put it into your white and see how it looks. Because essentially a beige is kind of like a super light orange in a way. Or a super light peach almost. So first try with all that white to see and then you can adjust by adding in maybe a little extra yellow or a little extra red. Yeah. It's very sweet. It is, yeah. And honestly, like I can say as a viewer too, receiving a gift subscription is always really nice, especially when it's just individual like that. Obviously, gifted subscriptions can come from people who gift just randomly or in batches. And those are really nice and fun too. But it's kind of extra special when someone's like, you, I like you, you're going to get a gift today. <laughs> it's very nice. I hope that helped, Deb. Just more white in there and then trying to adjust with slight amounts of red and yellow. Um, red will get you kind of a warmer color, more of like a dirt color, I would say. And then yellow is a little more, um, hmm, not warmer. It's all, it, it looks cooler almost. I don't know. I wouldn't say cooler, but you'll, you'll see what I mean. It looks a little different. A little more of a, well, if you add more yellow, it'll be more of a yellowy sand, of course. But I find the red just kind of gives it a little more warmth, even though yellow is a warm color too. I find red gives that nice warmth. But yeah, lots of white is generally the key there. I'll give another quick minute in case anyone's still playing with the sand color. I'll just keep playing with mine as well. You can see how many different versions you can have just by adding a little bit of yellow or a little bit of red making it a little bit lighter. Um, some people also add a tiny bit of black to um, their beige sometimes just to kind of dirty it up, make it a little more muted. I do not personally, but I don't know. There might be times sometimes where I do depending on the painting, just not in this painting. So that is an option as well if you'd like to try it. Just a tiny touch of black, but the tiniest amount, not, not much at all. It helped. Perfect. Okay, great. Yeah, and if you don't want it more yellowy, you could add a little red to help counter that. But again, I would find if it's a super light yellowy sand, I think that's perfect. There's lots of different, uh, again, lots of different sand colors. I feel like we all have a different version in our brains what sand means to us, what a beach means, right? We've all visited different areas or grew up in different areas. There's even like kind of pink beaches, more like red kind of clay beaches. So yeah, lots of different options. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do then is I, I just mentioned about adding black. I'm not going to do that. I do that for this color though. <laughs> That's how you make it a little darker. So we see this kind of, again, dirty sand color in here. It's a little darker. This was my idea of kind of symbolizing the, the wave kind of crashing into the sand. So you might get some sand kind of lifting up with the wave but also kind of just crashing as well, a little bit of like a dusty look almost. So yeah, not quite as detailed as like a photo would be, but I think enough to kind of translate into um, the crashing wave, just the small little crashing wave on the beach here. So what I'm doing is I'm switching brushes. Now I have my medium round and essentially I'm first gonna remix my beige color just cause I'm all out here. But all I'm gonna do is I am going to add just a tiny bit of black to that and it'll start to kind of dirty up or darken up. So I'm just remixing that same beige color that was yellow, white, and red. Into it, I'm going to add just a little bit 
of black. And I mean a tiny amount, like even this is a lot. I'm gonna wipe off a bit and mix it in. Wipe off a little more, mix it in. And you can see how it's again, dirtying it up. It's not a very like, very warm, pretty brown or anything. It's kind of like a dirty sand color. So it's signifying the sand getting wet and kind of lifting up into, um, into the water. And again, you can add more red and yellow as needed if you feel like you need some to make it a little, again, warmer or just add a little more color rather than more of a gray, you can do that. And again, it might look a little tricky on your plate. It might look a little wrong, but just try. Try to add a little. And you're like, oh, wait, that is kind of working, you know? Like, if I were to look at this, I'd be like, I don't know if that's the right color. But when you add it, you can kind of see how it matches with your previous beige is just a darker version and that's what you're looking for so i was just applying it to show you there but i'll show you how to apply it in a second just want to give another second in case you're still mixing <clears throat> oh how do you get paint off the keyboard keys yes um just water just water um yeah acrylic paint doesn't do great with clothing just because the paint will get into the thread and sometimes it's hard to get out but any like um any solid surface, yeah, keyboards, mice, my mouse, for example, many times has been splattered with paint and it looks totally fine. Just apply some water, I guess, carefully to make sure the water doesn't get in the keyboard. Um, and then just kind of picking off the paint or wiping it off. The water essentially will um, kind of reactivate the paint in a way and that'll make it easy to wipe away. Yeah, oh no. <laughs> yeah, moist paper towel, exactly. Sometimes I find it useful to kind of kind of wipe the paint and kind of let the water sit on it and then that way it breaks it up and then you kind of just wipe it or pick it away and it makes it a little easier so don't hesitate or don't don't worry if it doesn't come off with one swipe you might just need to let it kind of rest a bit so it uh, makes the paint nice and wet again yeah but yeah moist paper towel is pretty safe all right so let me show you what we're doing with this color here what i'm doing is grabbing my medium round brush and you can see what i'm trying to do here is something a little different i'm now kind of stippling the paint on so that means i'm just tapping straight onto the canvas i'm allowing my little bristles to kind of spread apart a little bit as i do this allowing the tips to just touch and release the paint and i'm kind of just covering any remaining gaps you can see i left a tiny bit of a gap there and I'm also bringing this up a little into the blue and a little down into the sand. So adding this into the sand here, you can see it really softens up the whole area. It looks very, very kind of light and cloudy. And on top of the blue, it might look a little more harsh. And it might look a little funny because, again, we don't have that highlight on top yet. So it's going to look like almost the sand is just kind of blowing <laughs> on top of the water. But when we start to add the nice kind of highlight and the nice um, the nice splash, the nice mist, it'll look a little more like the sand is within that splash, if that makes sense. It won't look like the sand is just splashing on top of this background water. We're going to bring the water a little more foreground and make it look like the sand is kind of catching within the water. At least that's how I interpret it all. Again, there's probably many ways. There is definitely many ways to kind of create a crashing wave like this. But this was my way. I would say this is a little bit of an easier way. I would say less detailed way. Because again, my main focus with this painting was more the background wave in my opinion. So I didn't want to spend too much time on this part. So again, just softly tapping. And I would say with a little less paint, by the way, you can see I am reloading my brush, but I'm not blobbing the paint on. That's another key. I'm just making sure there's a little bit of paint on the edge of my brush or on the tip of my brush rather. And that way, as I tap, small amounts of paint come off and it comes off in a very soft look. Vray, welcome in. Hey, you can see we're uh, in the middle of our toot. We're just getting uh, the little crashing wave done here on the bottom. And we're getting up to the exciting parts. We're about to get our little mist on, the nice highlights. I'm going to pull this thing all together. Hope your weekend was good, Vray. So again, if you think this looks a little funky right now, that's okay. I understand. <laughs> I always reassure that because with every painting, there's always these weird in-between stages where you might be second guessing yourself and saying, I don't know what the heck this looks like, but we got to hang in there. We got to hang in for those last couple steps to see it all pull together before we can make our any, any judgments, you know? It's very important. It is hard though. So that's why I remind everybody a lot.
And I just keep looking in the viewfinder to see my painting from a little further back. And I'd recommend that for everybody, by the way. Just have a look at your painting here and there, especially as we get to our last few stages. Um, have a look at your painting from a little bit of a distance, whether that means like on a computer screen shrunk up like I am, or just literally by taking a step back, taking a photo of it. All of that works nicely. It just helps you kind of see the whole painting together rather than focusing in on small areas, especially as we do parts like this. It might look funny because you're just staring at the one part, but if you start to look at everything all together, you're like, oh, okay, it kind of makes sense with everything else going on. Almost done here. I was going to comment that I feel like this looks very straight. And if you don't like how straight it's looking, you can, of course, bring the sand up a little higher in certain spots. Nowhere in particular, just here and there, you know? So maybe on the edge here, I'll bring it up a little higher. Maybe over here. Just to give a little bit of variety, of course, just so it doesn't look like a big strip of sand. Because it will be a wave, right? So it makes sense that some of the sand will be kind of bursting up a little bit more with the wave, and then some will be a little lower. Oh, you like Lady Galaga too, Vray? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I really need to pop by your streams. I've been trying to get back into watching streams, but I'm still not watching as much as I used to. I feel like as I'm not streaming, I also don't watch either. <laughs> and then as I stream more, I watch way more. That's the Twitch life, I guess. Okay, this is better. This is better. So yeah, a little more of a, a wavy bit rather than just straight across. You can see I've added some sand a little higher now. So I'll just give you a couple minutes for that in case you're still working. I'll just keep tapping away here as well. <clears throat> uh, the weekend was good. That's good. Mine was good too. I had a friend visit who I hadn't seen in a while, so that was really nice. Um, had some good barbecue food. Went to one of my favorite places in my area for some good barbecue. And what else? Oh, I went to a drag show for the first time. That was so much fun. I've never been before and there was one held uh, in my local area just at a brewery, honestly. And uh, I didn't know drag shows were traveling to breweries and I was like, okay. And again, my friend invited me with a couple of his friends, and uh, it was a great time. So fun. If you've never been to a drag show, it's just like a big party with good music and people lip syncing and dancing. It's great. Very fun. So yeah, kind of a busier weekend than I've had most weekends, which is nice. And last week I was doing a lot of painting, so it was a nice break. Yeah, yeah. Highly recommend. Just all the best music. The drag queens know their, their good 90s hits, you know? Some nice Britney. There was like a nice Spice Girls mashup at one point. It was lots of fun. And their costumes, of course, that's kind of the whole point of the drag show is the costumes, I would say. Just so impressive what they make. A lot of them make their own costumes, I learned. Very impressed. And yeah, again, held at a brewery, so like, went a little early, grabbed a beer. Serving food as well. Yeah, it was a nice, uh, nice idea for a nice casual outing. Excuse me, I gotta blow my nose again. Sorry, Charlene, the auto mod, I don't know what word it pinged, but it didn't like a certain word, but you're fine. <laughs> I'm going to Halloween party on October 29th at a Western Cowgirl. That's cool. I don't have any plans for a specific party yet, but I'm trying to figure out my plans. I don't know what I want to be for Halloween yet. I need some ideas. <clears throat> uh, I lost my water drinking. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah, not the paint water. We always know where that is, but never our drinking water, huh? Priorities. Drag queens do their makeup and dress nicer than I do. I could use tips for them. Yeah. Your makeup was very fun as well. 
very big makeup, but like still so much skill involved as well. Makeup's kind of like painting with all the blending and stuff and color matching and all that. And yet, I can't do makeup very well. <laughs> it's a different canvas working on your face rather than a uh, than a canvas itself or a piece of paper. But yeah, so many different skills and talents amongst uh, amongst the drag queens. Okay, I think I've blended enough. I hope everyone's good with what they've done here with the sand, because I'd like to move us on to the final pieces here, which is adding our nice highlights. So I'll give that heads up now. Start washing off your brushes. I'm going to keep using my medium round brush personally and switch to a small brush eventually. So if you're done with your sand, give that a good wash. Give your brush a good wash and then we can get into our highlights. I'll explain those in, a, in another minute. Uh, maybe Autumn on a cowgirl. What would be wrong with cowgirl? I've never been able to celebrate Halloween, but if I could, 100% do Winnie the Pooh. Aww! Is it because you're just busy on Halloween, Gertie, or other reasons? And I mean, who's to say you can't just dress up as Winnie the Pooh for fun? <laughs> Find a little event to go to and say, I'm just gonna dress up for fun? Oh yeah, and the hair! Oh my gosh, all their hair was so cool too. A lot of them were wigs, but some of them had nice natural flowing hair. Loved it. Okay, let me zoom you in again here. And we can talk about these highlights because they are a little, um, a little trickier than you'd think. Just in terms of when we zoom back, it kind of looks like it's just some white on top. You know, we're just going to do some white and call it a day, but the answer is no, we're actually going to do three different shades of color. Again, that's the key to getting these um, more realistic looking paintings I find is using lots of different shades of color just to kind of stack on top of one another. So if you look very hard, for example, right here, example right here, um, you say this kind of like darker, kind of like a gray blue color. It's like a gray blue. Then I have this more medium tone gray blue. You can see it all in here, all in here. And then only at the very tippy tops is where we add the plain white. So essentially we're making like just kind of shadowy whites to begin with to save the white for the very, very top to make it really look nice and highlighted right at the tops of our splashes. So again, here, for example, here's our dark gray blue. We've got a medium gray blue and then white right on top. And the same applies down here as well. We're going to kind of tap in some darker gray blues into our sand, some lighter gray blues, and then white on top. And then one more time, <laughs> we do the same thing with our little water lines in here. Any of these little kind of foamy bits just to show the water kind of moving around. This is the dark gray blue right in the middle here in the most shadowed areas. And then as we get more to the highlighted areas where the wave is maybe a little higher up, for example, kind of reaching out to the light, we get our lighter gray blues and then plain white as well. So we'll be working color by color and I will be kind of moving us around the painting with each color. So we'll start with a nice darker gray blue, tapping that all on. I'll do the water lines in here. We'll tap it on down here and then we'll kind of go from the start again, do a lighter gray blue, lighter gray blue, lighter gray blue. And then the last color is when it's all going to, again, really pop off is the nice white when we can highlight the very tip tops of our wave or our splashes. Even here you can see with the wave that's curling over we'll do the same thing just tiny bits of white here and there. All right hope that sounds good. So uh, we'll begin with that. So I'm going to use my medium round brush again like I said for pretty much all of that kind of switching to a smaller brush if I need to. Like if I want to do tiny little water droplets I'll probably bring out my small brush but the idea of a round brush is also that it has a nice tip, so you could just very lightly use the tip if you need to here and there. But yes, yeah, so let's make a nice gray blue. So I'm going to start with white. I'm going to find a new spot on my plate, maybe here. And again, I'm going to mix a fair amount of this color because I'll be using it around my canvas a lot. And I'm going to mix together just a tiny bit of black into the white and then a tiny bit of blue. I was describing these colors as gray blue colors and it's quite literally just making a gray and then throwing some blue in there. So again, white, a little bit of black and a little bit of blue. And again, I would say this is kind of dark to medium. It's not super, super dark, of course, because these are still 
kind of lighter bits of the painting, lighter bits of the foam and the splash. But we want to make sure we can make this a little lighter for our next step as well. So just something more in the middle, something medium toned. Can you see that pulling through there? Hopefully that's my white, black and blue. Maybe a little darker than that. Again, never has to be exact. Just trying to get it as close as possible. Black, white, blue. Uh, oh, Deb, I do keep kind of switching back and forth between calling it dark and medium, so excuse me. <laughs> we are doing the darkest of the three. Um, I would say as a whole it's more of a medium gray blue, but I keep kind of calling it the dark one because it's the darkest. I hope that makes sense. So where my little mouse is there, that's what I'm making here. See, like amongst the three, it's the darkest, but when you really compare it to all of the colors, it's it's quite like medium tone. So <laughs> sorry, I know it's a little confusing, but yeah, the darkest of the three. It is a medium, more medium tone, but the darkest. Oh yeah, Charlene, did you like it? I know that's a newer one that's out. So that's why I'm still, uh, Deb, that's why I'm still adding a little blue and a little black. I'm just kind of getting this not quite dark, but not, not light either. Somewhere in between. I think that's a good one there. I'll do another couple seconds for that chug. Okie doke. So we'll be going back to what we were doing with the sand is kind of stippling. So using less paint on our brush and just lightly tapping again. So I did use my brush to mix all that color. If you did as well, you might have a lot of paint kind of stored up in your brush. So kind of squeeze it out to save some. You can even wash it off if your brush is totally clobbered with paint like mine is. And then you can just tap a little bit on your brush like this. I'm just kind of tapping right on top, maybe tapping off a little bit as well. And then we're just going to go in and start tapping along the edges that have this nice kind of mist. So any edges that are along the top, or that might be kind of crashing. So I am starting here, for example, because this is the crashing wave. So I want to make sure we can really start to see it crashing. So I'm putting some mist right at the bottom here where the wave is crashing into the other water, just like I was with the sand. I'm just lightly tapping. <clears throat> I'll show you a close up here. I'm lightly tapping so that we have some areas that are fully covered, but some areas where you can see the little bristles as I tap. So you're creating some little gaps and you're closing up other little gaps as well. Kind of like almost piling on a little extra kind of right in the middle of the area and then maybe tapping a little lighter above and below. So you get, like I said, those small little bristles creating small little markings. So it makes it look a little more delicate. And I'll be continuing up along this edge that we created. So again, to showcase that wave that is uh, crashing here. And again, I'm trying to avoid uh, creating like a solid line all the way up. Of course, you could start with that. But as we go along, I'm trying to push my brush a little further up or a little further down just to get it so that there's some randomization in the splash itself. There's a little bit more variety. It's not just, again, a solid line. You want to make it look like there's some mist or splash that's kind of popping up a little more. There's some that's not popping up as much. So that's why you can see me kind of going up and down a little bit here and there. Just mixing a little more. but generally moving, yeah, all the way along this edge here to begin with. I just like beginning with that so that we can really start to see, because I think that's a really cool part, the, uh, the wave kind of curling over. So that kind of showcases that a bit better. I'm just going to add a little more, I think. And keep in mind, we don't need to make, you know, you can see a lot of mist in the original here. If you really look at all the foam and the mist, there's tons here. But keep in mind, we don't have to paint all of it now, right? We can kind of just focus on the bottom edge or just the bulk of it. And then we can leave the top edge for later as we add our lighter colors. So um, don't be worried about kind of replicating exactly what you see in terms of how much of this splash or mist. 
because again we still have two more shades to add as well that we can add above and on top. All right so I've done this little edge here again no rush you can just kind of go at your own pace at this point because this is all very similar steps with the mist but I do like to add a little bit up here even though this wave is breaking you still might have a little mist coming off but I would say I'm adding just a little bit I don't want it to be a huge splash like down here I just want it to be small indications of some some water kind of rippling about or um, some little water droplets kind of shooting off here so I'm just doing a very light tap with my brush along this top edge of the folding wave just a wee bit it was good that's good that's good I'm sure it is with Jamie Lee Curtis right she's a she's a superstar love anything she's in All right, and then as I move over to the open wave here, we're going to go back to adding lots of mist because again, the wave is going up like this. This is that top edge of the wave. All the spray is blowing in the wind so we can go again with adding lots of our little taps of our brush here. Lots and lots and lots, just filling up that edge. It's almost like I am trying to hide, by the way, this harsh edge that we created with the blue. So if you're looking for a place to start. Start just by really tapping heavily on that edge to kind of cover it up and then you can start to tap a little lighter to get our smaller droplets and more of a soft edge on a, on the top and bottom of our mist. I'm already running out of paint. I need to remix a bit. Again, if you remix a color that's just slightly different, that's totally fine. As long as it's generally kind of a darker gray blue, that's absolutely fine. It can change a little as it goes. I'm not intending to do that, but it just might happen with my color mixing. Uh, are we using the medium or small brush? My droplets are big. I'm tapping with the medium. I'm still using medium myself and my taps are a little bigger. If you'd like to switch the tiny one, you could. Um, but I will say I feel like the tiny brush I really only bring out for the white because those droplets are going to be kind of on top of everything. I know obviously you can see some droplets here, but I feel like as we add our lighter colors, I'm just going to go on top of those anyway. So it depends. If you want to add lots of nice detail, you can of course go in with your tiny brush now and just do some light little taps up top. That would be good. Or if you want to wait, uh, yeah, wait for the end there. I feel like it's more so just necessary we do that with the white um, or if you want to try and use your medium brush to get those small little dots I would just try using a little less paint so keep wiping it off before you tap and then just try and tap very softly and they're not going to be the tiniest dots but you can see you can get a little bit of like a soft soft dot and separation there if you start to tap a little lighter with less paint so yeah a couple options for you there but yeah, you can you can switch at any time, Deb and everybody else. If you ever feel like using a different brush or a brush isn't working for you, I definitely encourage you to uh, try a different one for sure. Because that's usually the case. I think people often run into issues and they say, oh, I'm not doing it right. It's, it's something I'm doing. And I'm like, maybe it's just the brush. <laughs> maybe the brush is to blame. <laughs> and uh, they switch brushes and they go, oh, you're right. So as long as you're not doubting, doubting yourself. Just try a different brush. Okay, and if I'm looking very specifically at my original here, again, you can see some of this mist kind of cubs down a little bit. It'll cover up a little bit of your light spot, but it'll just kind of show the water that's quickly dropping, right? That's quickly coming down as well. The mist doesn't just come up, it kind of comes down with the wave as well. So if you're daring and want to cover up a little bit of your light spot just lightly tapping that same color just kind of down in a little scraggly shape or motion here just tapping it and it looks like it gives dimension too right because it kind of shows that nice top layer overtaking the nice uh the nice light spot yeah even though these layers are all pretty necessary again to achieve the look that i did it's really the top layers that I would say are the most um, the most important almost because they kind of lie on top of everything. They're the, the highest one. 
So if these layers look a little messy just as we're kind of testing things out, it's almost like a dry run, you know? We'll still see this color, of course, but that top edge we're probably going to be fixing up with lighter colors as well anyway. All right. And again, experiment with how much you're adding, like do some thicker areas. You can see I kind of did a thinner area over here just to change it up a bit. Did some that are kind of really splashing up high. Just getting some variety in there. Thank you, took me a minute, dogs are barking. Oh yeah, no worries, no worries. You're good, you're good. I always assume if I give an answer and I don't hear back, it means it's working because <laughs> the person is painting. But yeah, totally fine. Oops. Bring it back there. I'm still going slow here. I'm still, um, I'm just going to start to do the same thing in the sand now. There's really no difference. So I'm just going to tap away here. I'm just tapping kind of in the middle of the dark sand. So that darker beige color we made, I'm starting to tap a little on top of that. So it makes it look like you can see what's happening. It almost makes it look like it's dulling down the sand a bit. And again, it's kind of like mixed into the water in a way when I start to tap. So I'm leaving some of the sand color showing, but just kind of tapping a little on top of it. So it softens it and also kind of brings it back as well, like backwards. All right, so keep tapping away. I'm going to wait before I go onto the water lines, by the way, with this color. So just keep taking your time. And again, I am doing kind of some splashes here and kind of bringing it up and down a bit. And that's just to kind of practice a little bit too. It's almost like I already described it as like a dry run, but it's kind of like a test, right? You can kind of see how things are looking. If you feel like you need to add more height, you can do that with your next few colors. Or your other option is just cover up what you've made so you can keep the same shape that you've, you've made and you know that you like. Again, layering is great with acrylics, just so easy to go on top of things. So it's always easy to do if you need to. So those are all the main areas for the mist, foam, whatever you want to call it. I'm still going to give some time. I'm just letting you know that I've kind of hit all of those areas. The only thing remaining with this color is now the water lines. But again, I'll do that in maybe a couple minutes here just to give a little extra time. These are the last few steps, so I'll try my best to not rush through them. I'm just going to keep adding the same thing on my canvas here. I'm just going to keep adding this gray blue. I'm just mixing a little more. But yeah, like I said earlier too, I mean, the more layers, the better I am. Of course, if I wanted to make a much more detailed, you know, um, more realistic painting, I find just adding more and more layers really helps. So you really can't go wrong by doing nice in-between kind of gray blues, more very light, almost whites. Just if you want to elevate this painting in any way, or if you try again, you want to improve I would just keep adding all these nice in-between colors just add little layer by little layer and see it all come together a lot of people obviously paint differently but I find very common is to paint from dark to light so that's always a good place to start is just picking out some darker colors laying those down slowly moving to lighter colors laying those down and again either covering up previous layers or just adding kind of above them or on top of them Again, don't be afraid to bring that mist a little below 
That's what's really going to show the curl of the wave. So you can see I do it less over here because this wave is not really curling quite yet. I kind of have the curl more over here. But again, just to really showcase that curl, don't be afraid to just tap this a little below so it rests on top of those light spots, those spots we can kind of see through the wave. It really, again, adds a really nice layered effect, makes it look a lot more three-dimensional there. But at the same time, I don't want to overdo it. So I'm going to put my brush down. <laughs> I think I'm good. I think the chat's all good. I'll just give another quick minute just in case, and then we're going to move on to a lighter version of what we just did. This is the cool part. We can just add the new colors. There's really no other strategies. Oh, wait, we still got to do water lines. Right, I can't forget that. I'm jumping ahead. I'm too excited. Okay, let me mix a little more and then I'll show you the water lines before I forget that. Too excited to add our highlights on top. Okay. So by water lines, I'll show you one more time. I mean, all of these little lines within the water, you know how it is. If you see a body of water, you might see some kind of foam that's kind of coming out in different directions. It's just something that rests on top of the water to kind of show um, the water surface and kind of the water movement. So what I did is I used this first color here and just kind of swiped it back and forth. Oh, sorry, hold on. Deb, I just, uh, I'll read that in a second. Um, yeah, so just swiping back and forth, it shows, like I said, the surface of the water and the direction. So you can use kind of flatter lines to show that the water's a little more flat. If you want to show that the water's kind of rising up, then we can start to do these lines that kind of go diagonally up and it shows that the water's kind of bridging up like this. Same here, it's a little flatter. That's a little flatter here, I guess. Uh, and we use the darker colors, of course, where it's more shaded and lighter colors where the water's a little higher up and therefore hitting the light or just any top areas. So for example, on this wave, we're gonna have more white than we will the other color. All right, let me catch up on chat just to make sure I'm not missing any questions. Does Twitch have those bottom ads that you, they do, they do. So if that's interrupting anybody, let me know and I can raise up this painting even higher. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen Smile er uh, either. Is that a scary one? Are the water lines the mead dark gray or the mead light gray before we hit white? Uh, they'll, they will be multiple. So I'm starting with uh, water lines that are the color we were just using. So that'll be more in the middle. And then we'll use the lighter color, which we'll make later to kind of bring it out further. And then we'll use white as well to do the nice highlighted ones. So the answer is kind of all three. It will be with the color we're using and then with the lighter colors we make too. Yeah, Gertie, Twitch is kind of going crazy with ads. I'll talk about that more in a second when I, after I teach the step, because it is quite annoying. <laughs> so to do these water lines, we're once again using only a small amount of paint. We don't want to load our paint on. So I kind of coat my brush in the paint color. And again, this is the same color we were just using this medium dark gray or medium blue gray. And I'm wiping it off beside me here on my paper towel, just so there's barely any paint on here. Like my bristles are coated, but there's no big blob of paint. And then very lightly, just with a very light touch, you can even use the end of your brush to make it a little, you know, a little looser in your hand. That helps as well for a lighter touch. Uh, I'm just going to start kind of lightly swiping back and forth, kind of in a little bit of a zigzag, but it doesn't need to be a very distinct zigzag, okay? So I don't want anyone doing literal zeds, but I am just going a little left and a little right. A little left and a little right. And what should happen is because there's only a small amount of paint, it comes off. Oh, you could hardly see that. Um, it comes off super transparent and almost comes off looking a little scratchy. I'm actually going to lighten this just so you can see it a bit better because I, I personally can't see it on my camera there. But yeah, keep using that same color. But yeah, loosely holding the brush very lightly, just kind of scraping it back and forth. Oh, that's coming off now. You can see it back and forth. Again, the idea is that it comes off, it almost looks a little transparent. It looks like it's kind of scraping off of the brush. Oh, it's like disappearing again. That's crazy. I hope you can see what I'm doing. If not, let me know. But yeah, we're just kind of mimicking water lines in that we're going very horizontal, because like I said, the horizontal means that 
the water's a little more smooth, a little more calm. Like, it's not calm, but it's at least flat, I should say. And then we're just moving these lines in any direction we want the water to go. So if we think the water's going to be going up over here, like up on a wave, we can kind of curve it up a bit. You know, showing that the water's coming up. And just again, little zigzags or just little lines, very light scratchy lines. I don't want to add too much in this light spot, but we can do a little bit of curvy lines to showcase that curve of the wave as well. So kind of curving up like this. Again, I'm not trying to cover the, the light light spot, but just a little here and there. And if you feel like you ever add too much, you can see I just rubbed it away with my finger. You can also re-add a little blue here and there. And yeah, just little bits at a time. And mix it up. You don't always have to do lines. Sometimes I do these very like wiggly looking looking ovals almost. I'll, sh I'll show you by zooming in here on my original how we have some that are kind of horizontal zigzags, some that are more like squiggles, kind of ovals here and there. That's the thing. Water's going to go a lot of different directions. Oh, I grabbed a little red there by accident. We don't want that in the water. There's no sharks here. No. So yeah, small little like pools almost, like the water's kind of circling a bit and then maybe zigzagging away. Again, as long as you're going super light with it, I don't think you can really go wrong. Just light and wispy and again, not adding too much. And again, I'm really sticking in the center part where it's going to be dark. And again, I apologize if you can't see it on my camera, maybe it's just my screen, but it's definitely here, I swear. <laughs> the point is that you see it on your painting too, so even if it's subtle on your painting, I think that's a very good thing. We want to start it off subtle, it's going to be a lot more vibrant with our next few shades of color. So don't worry if you think it's looking very subtle and very dark compared to everything. With our next shades, it'll kind of lighten up a bit more. But that's the basic idea, just some horizontal lines, some curves if things are moving upwards. And otherwise just kind of wiggling around with your brush. Okay, not filling it up too much. All right, let me uh, scroll up here. I just want to make sure I'm not missing any questions. <clears throat> Oh yeah, we were talking about ads. Yeah, if ads are going crazy for anybody, again, I apologize. I can't affect those. I can't um, control those. Um, the most I've done is put it on the lowest setting of ads because you can choose how frequent ads will play. So I've done my best <laughs> to um, decrease the ads, but I'll let you know. That's Twitch's decision. They've been making a lot of decisions recently about ad revenue and how much ads are playing. And Gertie said like the bottom ad. I've seen ads that kind of pop up as a window as well, so unfortunately nothing I can do other than the subscription thing, but obviously I understand. <clears throat> oh, there you go. Tiggy says some diamond painting is available at Michael's. Very good. Winnie the Pooh movie called Winnie the Pooh Bun and Honey. Oh boy, like a, like a horror film it sounds like. <clears throat> That was it, even though I thought I had a little paint with the dotting, it was too much. There you go, yeah, it's a, it's a learning process. You think that you're using the least amount, and you're like, oh, there could be less. Again, I find wiping off the brush really helps. Like, after applying the paint, wipe it off further, and then try going in. It sounds like you figured it out, though, which is great. I did hear that, Gertie, and I didn't know if that was true, but I guess that is true. I thought it was Winnie the Pooh, and I heard maybe Pinocchio, and that's why there's all these Pinocchio movies coming out recently, because it's now public domain. Very bizarre. Oh, your phone screen is blurry. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know if it has the option on mobile, but you can sometimes change the quality of the stream, Diane, by clicking settings and then clicking quality. Sometimes, um, I guess the video will choose what quality is based on the buffering rate or based on your internet, but you can manually choose if that helps you. You can choose the highest quality. If you need me to zoom in on anything, just let me know and I can help you. I can bring the painting a little forward. Uh, horror film for sure. Again, look on YouTube. Yes, for poor Winnie the Pooh. Oh dear. I'm scared to look. <laughs> 
I don't, yeah, I don't want, like Gertie said, for poor Winnie the Pooh to be, to be ruined, to be corrupted, as she said. Oh dear. Oh, wait. Tell me what, tell me what. I'll wash off my brush in the meantime. Oh, I'm gonna zoom this out again, just so you can see how everything's looking as a whole. I'll zoom us back in when I'm looking at specific spots. Oh, good. Okay, good, Diane. I'm glad. I know for me, uh, when I'm viewing someone on Twitch, sometimes it just changes quality and it's uh, kind of the Twitch website, I guess, sensing your, your quality of internet. And if it thinks that the video is buffering, it'll lower the quality. Is that why we had the terrible Pinocchio movie in Polly Shores? The f Maybe. <laughs> I think that's why I heard it, because yeah, all of the... I know there's been a bunch of new Pinocchios coming out and everyone's making fun of certain ones, and uh, I think that's why. I would Google it just to be sure, but I think that's correct, Gertie. I think a couple things have entered public domain and all of the studios are just eating that up, you know? Because everyone knows Pinocchio, so they're just taking that and doing what they want with it. I think, is it Polly Shore? I don't know who it was, but I think I know what you're referring to. <laughs> okay, so if everybody's ready for the next step, and again, just please take your time at this point, because the next few steps are pretty much the same. We're just kind of using different colors and slightly different placement, but essentially we are going over top of the same things and just adding new colors. So what we're doing now is we're making, I'll call this the light gray blue. <laughs> I'll try and keep that consistent. It is definitely a lighter gray blue than before. So I think that works description wise and name wise, the light gray blue. So I'm just adding, as you can see, lots of white to my existing gray blue. I of course don't want this pure white. The idea is almost we're making like an off white. So it truly is going to be a very, very light version of what we were just making, but it's not pure white. We're still leaving that pure white for our last color. So as you can see, even though it looks very, very pale, very, very light, it's not quite the brightest white color there. So keep that in mind. Just make it as light as possible without making it white. But yeah, still blue gray. So if you're mixing a new pile, you can use lots of white and then tiny, tiny, tiny bits of black and blue just to, again, make it more of an off-white color. And same thing, you can see I washed off my brush after I finished mixing. I'm gonna tap on a little paint and then even tap it off a little beside me just so I know there's not a lot hanging around. And here we go, we're just tapping again. And you can see how light it is compared to the other one. It almost looks white, but again, it's not. And that's the key. We're going to leave the white for the very last bit. So the only difference with what I'm doing here is I'm now tapping just a little above the previous color because I obviously don't want to cover up all of our hard work. There was a point to us using that darker gray blue or medium gray blue, I should say. Uh, we don't want to cover it up, but we can overlap it a bit just so we can see some of it through the new color. And I can go a little on top or above, I should say. I know on top can mean either literally on top of the paint or above the paint. So yeah, we can do both. We can go on top and above. And that way I'll bring you closer here. That way you can see a little like shading and then a nice highlight on top. So yeah, compared to our previous color, it looks white, but it's not. We're still leaving the white for last. So I wouldn't say you can, I wouldn't say to add any more or less of this color. I would say it's just about the same. You're just placing it a little differently, a little on top and above. So a little covering and a little literally, literally above the last color. Hmm. <clears throat> But father, when can I leave to be on my own? Yeah, I think I know. <laughs> I haven't watched the trailer that much, but <laughs> I know it was making its rounds because it was kind of goofy. Yeah, the movie's funny because of how bad it is. I love movies like that. Get a few friends together and just laugh all the way through. Is that one on Netflix, Gertie? Where is that one? Because I know that one in particular has been talked about a lot. I might throw that on just for a little laugh here and there. But father, I don't want to go on my own. Weren't there other characters too that were really goofy? I forget, it wasn't just Pinocchio. I think there was like a horse or something like that. 
And the horse was equally as goofy. Everything just like overly exaggerated. So same thing everybody, again I'm not adding too much splash above here, I'm more so focusing the splash down here where the wave is curling over. And then otherwise continuing the nice big splash of mist and water droplets up here. And again, I am, you can see, only using my medium round brush. But if you need to whip out the tiny brush for any small droplets, feel free. My brush does a good job at separating, though. I feel like that's why I don't need to, if you can see on there, the bristles are now all more of like, uh, they're not coming to a tip. They're all very separate is what I'm trying to say. So that's how I'm achieving lots of little small dots is really allowing those bristles to separate. You don't need to slam the brush or anything to get that. Just kind of play with it, you know, with your finger here, kind of separate it, help the bristles um, detach from each other. And then when you apply the paint, just lightly apply and then lightly tap and you'll get all these tiny little dots. And then of course, the harder you tap, you can see the more blobby it will get. So that does come in handy when you want to cover an area a little faster, but I do try and tap just super lightly for the most part. So I know I said to stay kind of on the top. You can bring this down maybe a little on these bottom parts, but not too much because again, the idea is all of this mist down here will be darker because it's not hitting the light as much. So if you need it to be highlighted a bit, you can kind of tap a little extra on those parts that are coming down into the wave, but not too much. We definitely won't be adding white down here. So if you'd like to highlight it in any way, you should use this color now because otherwise the white will only stay on the very top. So yeah, travel it down if you need to. Uh, yes, a talking sassy horse, a talking cat, who for some reason was amazed at a talking wooden boy, of course, yeah. I thought only cats could talk. <laughs> um, and then I'll see if I can find which stream you said. Oh, okay, no worries if you don't know. I'm just curious if it's like easily accessible to me. Again, it might be a funny one just to throw on in the background as I'm painting or something, you know? Uh, Gaming Forest, welcome in. Hello. Hi, Erin. Hi there. Welcome in. We're just finishing up a little wave painting while listening to nice wave sounds. It's a nice, hopefully, relaxing stream for everybody. I am teaching everybody as I go, so that's why you might hear me saying some instruction. But yeah, feel free to stick around if you want to just watch. Hope your night's going well, gaming. <clears throat> and again you can see with these lighter colors I am putting them further up not just because of what I said but because I want to see the mist I want to see that splash on top of our very dark color and of course with these lighter colors it'll pop off a lot better so I'm really trying to make sure that I'm bringing those up high you can bring them as high as you want I'm just bringing them, I'm not bringing it any higher than you can see the horizon line here. It might kind of just touch, but not much higher. The point is, like I said, you can really see it nicely on top of the dark blue. So I'm really trying my best to showcase that. There we go. You can see how that's starting to look a little more misty. A little more realistic with those lighter colors. Apple TV. Oh, and Amazon Prime. Thank you. And you can buy it on YouTube. No, thank you. <laughs> I just watched commentary video react to it. Oh, okay. Honestly, I'd be willing to buy it just for the laugh. Really? Well, I do have Prime, thankfully, so I won't have to purchase. That's funny. Yeah, or I can just watch a commentary video. A YouTuber just going through it. Those are always fun. That's like watching it with some friends, you know, just laughing about the same things. Okay, I'm just going to work my way down here. Same idea. Again, nothing changed. We're just going to start tapping a little on top and a little above the little splash area here. Same thing, maybe bringing it a little higher so you can see those nice 
lighter colors on top of the darker blues. And of course we have to use this color for a few more water lines just to add a little more of a highlighted water line before we add our white. So keep that in mind. We want to use a little more of this color after we're done tapping it on. Maybe I should just paint with beach sounds all the time. This is honestly really nice. <laughs> Not worried about what song is playing or if it's matching the vibe. Wave sounds always match the vibe. Okay, it's still looking pretty dark down here, but I'm going to trust that the white's going to really do its job. So I'll stop there for now. I play wave sounds softly to help me fall asleep. Yeah, I've been starting to just listen to any sort of audio to help me fall asleep recently. It kind of helps turn off my brain a bit. Waves would be nice though. I like rain personally. I've been doing some rain sounds. The pitter patter of the rain. Uh, Sarah, hey, thank you very much for following. Welcome in. I'm just, uh, you can see, kind of finishing up a painting tutorial here. I do this, uh, I try and do it once a month, so if you like what you see, feel free to, uh, watch for my next one. I'll showcase the, uh, the next painting after I'm done this one. But yeah, thanks for following, hope you enjoy. I keep forgetting it's wave sounds and think, wow, it's really windy. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't sound too windy, that's funny though. Ooh, a storm is brewing. <laughs> that's funny, Gray. If you do watch a commentary video, I highly recommend Curtis. I love Curtis. I was honestly going to guess that it was Drew or Danny, but Curtis makes sense too. That's great. I will watch that, Gertie. <laughs> Fellow Canadian. I think he's Toronto boy. I think. <clears throat> oh, where am I here? Chat's moving, chat's moving. Oh, true. Welcome in. Rain and Thunder. That's my jam for sleeping. Is it? Welcome in. Yeah, I've only recently started doing that. I haven't, uh, I don't usually like to listen to sound as I sleep, like maybe like a fan going or something, but recently my brain just won't turn off. I need something to, uh, concentrate a little more on. Even like a podcast, even if I'm not listening along, just hearing voices has helped me too. But yeah, welcome in Truman. Hope you're well. <clears throat> Use a wave sounds to help my brain turn off. Everyone's busy. I know, it's the same with me. Like, right when I'm supposed to sleep, my brain's like, let's do all these things. Let's think about everything you could be doing right now. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I can't right now. I'm trying to sleep. All right, I'm going to move over to the water lines again, just because it is pretty much the same step. So again, no rush if you're still doing the, um, doing the mist. Just know that it's the same step. We're just going to move these water lines a little somewhere different. We're just going to start to bring these a little more out to the edges. So you can, once again, if you want to overlap a little bit of what you've done, but just start to move this kind of lighter gray blue closer to the edges where the light will be hitting. So for example, up here, I keep doing these curved lines to show that the water's moving a little further up and therefore will catch more, more uh, light, excuse me. So once again, just using a small amount of paint, tapping it off. And you don't need to have your bris bristles spread out, but I'll let you know, if you have your bristles spread out, it makes it look a little scratchier. It's like you're seeing a bunch of little lines all next to one another. And I really like that for the water lines. I'm trying not to make very distinct, you know, like very clean edges and lines. I want them to kind of look a little, a little rough, you know? So, if anything, I would leave your bristles all kind of tattered up from when you were tapping and just use that thick tip to um, 
brush back and forth for those lines. So you can see I'm going along the edges here. I might pull a little into the middle, but not a lot. Just to make it look like it's kind of fading away. I'll go over to this edge, do the same. Start to highlight a bit. So you can start to see that transition from the darker to the lighter. You can even add a little if you want on the top of this guy here to kind of show the water direction again. So kind of curving down with the wave just very lightly. As if it's kind of rushing down. Just pulling down a bit. Oops. I put my feet on the bottom of my easel when I paint, so sometimes it jerks forward, so sorry about that. <laughs> but yeah, not too much, because we still have white to add as well, so I'll add just a little more up here, I think. And then I'll catch up on chat before we move on to the last color. And then don't forget, I said to avoid the middle, but we can do kind of the bottom middle because this is where the next little crashing wave is happening. So we want to show that there's some water that's kind of risen above a little bit again, right? Because there's going to be a little bit of a bump if there's a little crashing wave. So we can do a couple kind of squiggly horizontal lines to really show you can see that wave kind of starting to form just that top edge. Again, it doesn't need to be a harsh line, just using the new lighter gray blue to kind of create some water lines to show a little bit of a highlight. Okay, and again, I don't want to overdo it, so I'll stop there. You can see how it looks scratchy a little bit. You can see all those water lines coming in. I'm going to give a minute or two, and then we'll do our last color. Last color. Let me catch up on chat if anyone has questions. Give me a second here. <clears throat> Waiting for the snow to come next couple days. Is that confirmed? Does the weather say it? That's actually kind of exciting, but I feel like fall was never here as well. I feel like I'm glad that I started celebrating fall earlier than most because um, it seems to have come and gone like lickety split this year. Um, I like rain, but can't do it. It has thunder. Oh, the golden scared of thunder. No, we've never had a dog who's scared of storms but i've seen them and it makes my heart break deb so i can understand you're like no thank you oh <laughs> i like doing sleeping meditations i need to get into that man i <laughs> i've said for so long that i need to do like sleepy meditations or just like afternoon end of day and i never do it and i keep hearing it's so good yeah and some exercises yeah breathing exercises <laughs> the holy trinity is true they're all good boys they're all good boys I'm good, Truman. Thank you. Doing lots of painting. Uh, you can see we're doing our little toot here. I'll show another painting I've done when I'm uh, done instructing this one. But yeah, I've been feeling good and productive recently, so that's a good change. My brain has been busy my whole life. I've always been so jealous when I can fall asleep. I used to do that, Deb. Like, <laughs> as of like months ago, I was able to do that, and now all of a sudden I can't. So I'm also annoyed. <laughs> I am annoyed. Waitlist by Macaro Ma Ma Maro. Oops, excuse me. <laughs> Marconi Union. Okay, it's my go-to for falling asleep. YouTube has an awesome 30-minute loop. Mm. Waitlist. That sounds intriguing. It sounds ethereal. I'm opening a tab to open that up for later. Thank you. Thank you, cat. <clears throat> Sometimes I find melatonin gummies help. I've never tried melatonin either. I've heard from some people that it makes them way too groggy, like even the next day. So I've just never, never tried. Mm -hmm. Oh, you say it doesn't make you too drowsy. That's good. That's good. I have 30 minutes of battery left on my laptop. I'm working my table. We're almost done. Don't worry, Deb. Well, depending on how much you have left, um, I really only have one more color. I just have the white to do and I'll let you know. It's pretty much the same steps as usual. So if the laptop dies, it's no worries. You pretty much have your tools needed here. But I'll go through it in just a minute. Not all. I find it's like taking vitamin gummies, which aren't addictive. Yeah, I haven't heard they're addictive at all. Um, only way I can see being different. If you like the feeling, right. <laughs> or if you use it like, I don't know. I guess I don't know if you were to use it every single night, Gertie. Maybe you'd create a little habit. But from what I know, it's not addictive per se. You licking us, Todd? What's up? 
<laughs> Good to know I've had a severe roof lately. Stupid bad where I'm only sleeping. Yikes, I'm sorry, Gray. Hoping melatonin might help, but I'm scared I've become dependent. Yeah, I, I don't want to say because I don't really know. Um, I've never heard that they're addictive, but um, I would check for sure before starting. Check with a medical professional. Check with your doctor. Oh, I had a dog that was scared of me sneezing. His mom's dog was still. Excuse me, but not all dogs are good boys. Some are good girls. I was saying good boys to the holy trinity that, uh, <laughs> that Gertie was saying, but you're right. You're right. Some are good girls. They're all good, though. Weightless is great. You can play it on repeat. When it first came out, they had a warning not to play weightless when driving. Oh my gosh. So it really works, huh? <laughs> That's really funny. Don't drive and listen to this beautiful soundtrack. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. Exercise in general, Charlene, I'm sure is good. Todd says melatonin does absolutely nothing for me. Benadryl knocks me out. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I've heard good things about Benadryl, but that shouldn't be used as a sleeping aid from what I know. <laughs> Just if it happens to be around the time when you're sleeping. <clears throat> yeah, that's it's interesting, Gertie. Like, maybe I'll look into it, because all I've heard is from people is that they say it makes them way too groggy even the next day, so I've kind of stayed away, but even a couple recommendations will convince me to try. Gravel works. Oh, really? That's the, like, anti-nausea, right? That's interesting. I didn't know that. Or the dose I was on was too low. Yeah, I, I know nothing about doses or dosages for that. I take a magnesium supplement called Calm. <laughs> it's called Calm, so I mean, it better make you calm. Magnesium, though. Yeah, that's interesting, Kat. z -quil is literally just a double... Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's in the name. <laughs> it's in the name. Balance app is good. Is that a free app? Or, like, free to a point. That's a good recommendation, Gertie. Two Benadryl makes me loopy for a full day. Ironically, the vet has given me the dogs three pills and they are just as hyper as ever. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Remember, though, I have big dogs. That's fair. Oh my gosh, you're allergic to Benadryl. Like, Benadryl is the allergy medication, isn't it? That's kind of ironic, cat. I'm sorry, I can't stop my allergies because I'm quite allergic to Benadryl. Oopsie. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely, Deb. Absolutely. It's just as important as humans, like you said. Oh my gosh, we have many Benadryl allergies. There's gotta be another solution. <laughs> you need something to help. Okay, I'm gonna move on to our last step just in case anybody's waiting for it, but of course keep chatting away and I'll join in when I'm done teaching here. But the last step is of course just white paint, so this time there's no mixing required, I'm just using a plain white paint. I don't know if that got out of focus, sorry about that. There we go. Um, just plain white paint, again same instructions as usual, we're just lightly applying this with a little bit of a stipple, just tapping our brush. Uh, the only things I'll say is I think I would add um, the least amount of this color compared to the last two colors we've been adding because again this is meant to be just a very bright beautiful highlight so the key is that we don't want to overdo it or else it's going to not really look like a nice highlight, it's just going to look like another color amongst all the others. So. The way I'm doing this is I'm choosing just to add this in small little patches or batches almost. So even though this whole area here has a top edge I could highlight, I'm just going to stick to this area here, for example. So just this very specific spot where I'm going to carefully tap on some white, maybe add a little extra mist that's kind of bouncing up here, and then I'll leave the rest alone. Because again, even though this isn't white in here, it's still a very, very pale light color. So it still kind of gives off the effect of the mist by having a nice light shade. Uh, same thing over here. I'll just maybe add a little tiny bit of white here, for example. And I don't want to say I'm adding these in specific spots, but I kind of am. I'm really just following, honestly, my original, though. So there's no real theory to exactly where I'm adding the white. Um, I, this is just me kind of replicating a reference photo. So. I guess in the photo, these would be all the spots where the light was directly hitting, where the lightest parts were um, were coming through, right? So if you need to use mine as a reference, of course, do that. Just kind of 
just use your eyes to look for the lightest spots, the very brightest spots. I almost find that like squinting helps as well because squinting kind of blurs all the colors and it allows you to see just like little blobs of color. So you can see where the whites are a little easier. You can see all the nice highlights kind of popping through so you can kind of show or um, yeah, show yourself where those highlights are. But otherwise, generally I'm just sticking to the top here, the top edge, not adding too much of this white. Even if that means just like stippling a little lighter, then that's good too. You can still add it in all of those places, just stippling a little lighter with a lighter touch and less paint. Um, this is a good chance as well to bring out a nice detail brush if you want to add very tiny little water droplets that might be kind of spraying away, you know, from everything else. You can either just use your medium brush like I am, or if you want to, you can of course bring out your tiny brush to um, be very particular about where those tiny little dots are going. But yeah, otherwise you're pretty much doing the same thing as you have been doing. So just take your time as usual, you know, give yourself some breaks, have a look at how it's looking as a whole, and then you can keep adding if you need to. I had to use Claritin for allergies because Benadryl works really well for allergies, but I also can't function. Yeah, no kidding. There's certain points where we don't want to be falling asleep after having our Benadryl, I'm sure. Oh, story of my life. I'm allergic to everything. Oh, dear. We were just talking about those allergies earlier. All this talk makes me feel like I need to go get an allergy test. I just don't want to, even though it's a good idea would probably solve some problems, but I refuse. I'll get there eventually. <clears throat> I used to find Micro's voice in Dirty Jobs to put me asleep very deep and soothing. That's so funny. Very specific. But we all have our things that work for each other. That's really great. I wonder if he's had that before, if anyone has told him that. You have such a soothing voice, Mike. I don't watch you for your dirty job show. Just, uh, just your nice soothing voice. I've had people tell me that they, they don't necessarily really use me to fall asleep, but they absolutely have fallen asleep during my streams. And, um, I don't take it as an insult. That's like, it's very nice to hear, honestly, that my voice is that soothing that people could fall asleep to it. So that's fine. <laughs> don't want to offend, but <laughs> I have fallen asleep during your streams. Or like, we'll throw on a tutorial of mine on YouTube and just use that to kind of fall asleep. I'm like, all right, that's fine. You're learning how to paint while you sleep. I think that's uh, quite efficient, quite smart. You wake up and you know how to paint because you listen to me all evening. Very good, very good. <laughs> Thanks, Vonda. I'll keep catching up on chat here as I keep painting. Not sponsored, thank you. <laughs> but you can get a free year of balance. Has quite a few meditations available for free. That's what I was looking for. I'm sure all of these apps you have to pay eventually, but even if it's just like a free version or whatever. I pay a yearly subscription though, because it's... Yeah, yeah. And if you find you like it, you can absolutely do that. So there you go. Uh, Fab, I see. Thank you, Aaron. Water is always hard for me, but I think it turned out okay. Oh, good. I'm glad. Enjoy your evening too, if you're all set, if you're all done. Enjoy, Fab. Thanks for joining me as always. And uh, yeah, hope you're looking forward to the to the next painting. All scheduled and ready to go. <clears throat> yeah, Grace says, I have fallen asleep to you, Aaron. It's so relaxing and chill. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I feel like people have started by saying, I don't want to offend you, but... Because I don't take it as like, you're boring. It's just just relaxing and that's fine. That's a, it's a vibe I'm going for, so that's great. I can help with uh, people who haven't been able to sleep recently or have... You said your anxiety was peaking gray, so it's, uh, it's good. I'm glad I can still help. <laughs> <clears throat> Same here, I have trouble with water. I hope this was a good, good tutorial, especially again, because I think this is a little bit of a harder concept, honestly, but... I was honestly happy with what I was able to create and break down. I know this was obviously a longer tutorial. I try and keep them at two hours and I have been watching the time and see that <laughs> we are at 2.75 hours, an hour 45 minutes. But that's okay. 
again, I think a lot of this painting is just time with layers as well. It's not necessarily like almost three hours of straight different techniques. It's just a lot of taking different colors and layering them. So I hope that was beneficial. There's so many different forms of water you can paint or do art with. And this was just one that I wanted to try. Um, I guess the last thing I'll say about this white is you can see I started by saying, you know, add this very, um, not sporadically, but I guess add less of the white, right? We want to make sure this is kind of a nice highlight. There's less of the white paint compared to the blue grays. Um, I would say add less. And then if you want, you can, of course, add more. If you're kind of leaning back and you still think you need some more highlights, you just want some more light. Um, you can, of course, go back and add, I guess, as you gain a little more confidence with your brush in terms of what it can do, you can start to stack the paint on maybe a little thicker so you get more of some very bright white spots rather than all this um, just kind of the dotted white. You can get these very big piles like this, and that will really help brighten up certain areas too. just kind of piling on a couple more little stipples of white, and then you get more of a, um, a light spot as well. So yeah, start less, or start light rather, you can always add more. It's hard to go backwards, right? You can go backwards, you can go back and re-add your kind of light gray blue or your dark gray blue, but of course it's a little more tedious doing that, so I try and just not, uh, I try and avoid, avoid needing to go back to fix things up. Just start light instead, and then you can go back and add more layers of the same color. Okay, and just letting you know I'm moving down to the last little kind of wave area here at the bottom by the beach and it's the exact same process nothing has changed just kind of highlighting the top little bits allowing the spray to come up a little further and otherwise just leaving this part be partially to blame laptop is dying thank you so much Aaron. i hope you have a wonderful night rest of your week hey thanks you too deb it was really nice chatting with you as well as we painted yeah, if that laptop is dying, it's probably a sign to call it quits. You can always paint this or um, you can always finish up the little details later if you have any details left. But yeah, glad you enjoyed. I'll just be here finishing this up for the next couple minutes and then I'll say some closing announcements for everybody. Because I still have the water lines to do, I guess. I got the white water lines that I got to complete. But yeah, water is a great subject. I uh, I didn't want to do a bunch of water paintings in a row, but I'm sure I could come up with more different versions, not just of waves, of course, but like I pointed out, the underwater look. I guess there was kind of some running water in my last painting. We did a river, although that wasn't really the focus. It was more the trees and all that, but yeah, I'm obviously going through a water kick of some kind. I don't mind it. Okay, yeah, don't want to do too much down there. I could probably brighten those up a little bit just looking at my original. Looks like I could add a little more white here and there, but don't want to overdo it. Well, if you're feeling like there's too much water, you can always do an at camera painting. What is that in reference to? Is there no water? It's very dry, I assume. I want more water. I don't want less water. Well, I guess you're right. I want less water for toots is what I said. Just for the people. <laughs> I just don't want people to be bored with the one subject, you know? Okay, I'm now taking white and I'm doing the last little bit here, just adding very, very light white water lines. And by light, I mean I'm using the tiniest amount of paint and allowing it to just lightly scrape off. I don't want it to come off in blobs. And it is a very bright color, so I'm just being extra careful with using a small amount of pressure 
Then I'm doing this along the very edges here where there'd be some light hitting, kind of where the water's a little more raised up. I'll add just a tiny bit in here. I know the water is dark, but I'm thinking the light would kind of hit a little in there. And then once again, just kind of some horizontal or wiggly ones right above this last splash area, just to kind of show hopefully some height in the water. That again, it's kind of rising up. It's out of the shadow area. And it's coming to the beach. Oh, parts of the um, Atacama Desert hasn't been rained for the last several hundred years. I could just do a desert painting. <laughs> I just do this color all over the place. Show some blowing sand and call it a day. It's honestly not a bad idea. I haven't really done like a more of a deserty painting, you know? Some cacti or some like cool rock formations. That would actually be kind of neat. There we go. And it looks like that's a little further out from the wave in that case because of the white, it makes it look a little more highlighted, like the, the light is catching it. It's no longer covered by this big crashing wave here. I'll maybe add a little here as well. Again, we don't want to overdo it. Cool. I think that's about it. Again, you can see slight differences. I think I maybe went a little heavier on the white on my original. And that just takes some time just to kind of add all those layers, add as much as you need to until you have a highlight that you like. <laughs> All right. So I'll, uh, I'll do my little closing announcements just in case anyone needs to hear them and more so for the YouTube video. So excuse me, Twitch, as I <laughs> just go off with that. I'm going to throw this down here so we can see the whole painting completed. But yeah, I'll just say, uh, as usual, thanks everybody for tuning in, whether you're live on Twitch right now or watching me on YouTube, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for your support and just by viewing, just by viewing me supports me. So thanks so much. Um, again, if you like tutorials, if you like step-by-step -step tutorials like this, I do try and aim to do at least one free tutorial a month on twitch.tv slash Paints. That's where I am live now. Uh, and then posting them to YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, you're already there. You know how it is. Um, so yeah, if you want to join me for next month, I already have one scheduled. Um, this is a landscape orientation, so excuse me as I go across the screen with it. Um, I'll be teaching this one step by step. I believe it's the second Sunday of November, the 13th, right? Yes, yes. Not an unlucky day because it's not on a Friday. Uh, but yeah, if you want to tune in live so you can chat with me as I've been doing with the Twitch chat here, uh, feel free to visit me on my Twitch channel, 7 p.m. EST on Sunday, uh, November 13th. And I'll teach you that nice landscape painting step by step. Um, otherwise, enjoy everything else you see on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. Uh, what else do I say at the end of these? I don't know. Just check me out everywhere else, I guess. <laughs> I'm trying this thing right now where I'm doing art online and just trying to, um, you know, have fun with it and meet some new people. So feel free to check me out anywhere at Aaron Bun Paints, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, 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 I don't know, any other social medias, Pinterest. Twitch is the main one, though. I stream there, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, feel free to... Uh, uh, show me your paintings as well. I guess I always say that as well. Um, when you're all done your painting, whatever time it is, even if it's months from now, um, feel free to visit my Facebook page because there's a uh, little Facebook events for each of these uh, tutorials and painting designs. So I'm just typing that in the Twitch chat now, but if you visit the Facebook page and go to this event page, feel free to post up the painting you completed tonight just so we can see it all. Um, if you'd prefer to post on Instagram, you can tag me, Aaron Bun Paints, and that way I can see it. Uh, I'd love to see what everybody created. Otherwise, I think that's all. So again, thanks for joining me and uh, happy painting.